Welcome all back to Ilvermorny. It's been like three weeks, boys. Ooh, we are. We got some Quidditch going. The session's gonna be a big one, boys and ladies. Bitches. So, uh, this session, actually, let's do a quick summary of what happened last time since it's been a couple weeks. Big, crazy shit happened. Arcturus <coughs> came to the school, which is Arthur's dad. Give him a nice slap across the head for being a little dickbag. So Arthur got a little abused by his dad, which isn't funny. Don't laugh. What? It Thank was you. it was scary. I it was say. scary. Yeah. Um, you end up it's finding out that respect. Arturis and the headmistress are up to some shady business at the school, in which Finn is catching it on. However, Finn made a really good relationship, student teacher relationship with Lau, hey. and he ended up opening the Snakewood tree. Teacher. So he figured it out. He also. Got into the chapel. Thorn, the leader of the Puckwudgies, let him into the chapel to look at Isolt Sayer's journal. So, very big moment there. He opened the Snakewood Tree. However, Lyle's like, we can't go in right now. We need more training, so we'll stop it for now. For Arthur and um, Patrice, Quidditch tryouts. They went and did some Quidditch, got in. New keepers, new seekers. Right new here. keeper and seeker. So Arthur is the new seeker, and Patrice is the new keeper. You gotta seek to keep them. Mm -hmm. However, right? they found yeah. out Thunderbird is the worst team out of all the teams. <laughs> so they're they're you know they're very uh, optimistic right now. They they were were. True. Kiana is just kind of in and out of a coma in the hospital. She's getting better though. Arthur chose to go stay with her and make sure she was okay. But we'll see if she ever really realizes that. Um, on top of that, Melvin's been training with the Horned Serpent girl, um, Evelyn, and he's been coming pretty good at dueling. However, the big thing to be said here is that Thunderbird is still fractured and not working very well together. So we'll see where this session goes. But, last session, the last moment, ends with Patrice, Benedict, and Ayana out in the Brightwood Forest encountering a hide behind after the Chanotila warned them. So the session begins. Lightning cracks across the sky. Raindrops smash against the window. The wind's rattling it. Patrice tosses and turns, not realizing he's in a dream. You're in the moment. The hide behind is in front of you. As soon as I see it approaching behind a tree or maybe trying to make eye contact with it, okay. I want to immediately draw my wand at it and just cast my Sagittarius spell. Smart move, Gabe. Okay, give me a dex or uh, initiation roll. Oh my god, the high plan got an 18. 14 plus initiation. One. Initiative, right? Yes, is it Then Ayana. Oh, that's wrong one. Uh, six. Also, okay. So you get to cast Sagittario. Does it go off AC or on um, deck save? Do you know? I do not. Wait, this is a this. dream right now. He's no. dreaming. It's happened. Oh, sorry, I forgot to mention. Probably very important. There's a one month time skip to a week before Halloween. So he's kind of having a dream right now of this like event. Okay, yeah. I'm like, what? Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah probably a big thing to talk about. I was talking about the dream flashback. Okay, got you. I was a little shook. Yeah. It's okay. I was, just, I was scared. Sag. <laughs> Everything's been a dream this whole time. I just didn't know. You guys wake up from your nightmare and it's all over. Can this load? Holy. Yeah, it just says instant to 150 feet. Well, this is alphabetical. Um, EFGHIJK, Sagittario! La 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 la! Hey, hey, hey! Goodbye! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it goes off of AC within a target on a hit. Okay, so roll, roll higher than a 13 against the high behinds AC. High behinds, for everybody who doesn't know from the last, you still roll. Go ahead, David. High behinds are like werewolves, except they can One. like they can flexibly uh, 
That's terrible. They can fly. <laughs> Patrice doesn't wake up from the dream. <laughs> He's stuck. Oh my god. A flashback. Whatever. Okay. He doesn't wake up from the moment already. Patrice, out of fear, as he goes to cast his spell, he's not able to do the hand movement. His hands are shaking too much from fear. Nothing happens as you cast Sagittario. Your hands shake, nothing happens, and the hide behind growls, moving in on all fours at great speed. It goes to swing with a massive claw attack at Benedict. Holy shit, Benedict. 19! <laughs> oh my god! With its claw attack, it does a massive 2d4 plus 2. 4! 6 plus 2 is 8. Cutting through his robe, he slices up Benedict's chest, causing Benedict to lift off the ground, fly 5 feet back, and lay completely knocked out. He is in bad shape. Oh, shit. He's good on his Kong save. Holy shit. That, that like essentially killed him. In that moment, after he claws it, the creature looks to you two. Aana, shaking, takes a step back and casting Bombarda she casts Bombarda at the creature, at the hide behind. You don't make any big boy spells. <laughs> she needs to after that. Oh, Benny. Benny, no! Okay. This is also a range attack spell. Roll higher than a 13. She rolls a 5 plus no. Cast Bombarda. But it just whizzes right by. She successfully draws it out, casts it, but it whizzes right by the hide behind. It just has a massive smirk that starts to snarl as it shows its large fangs. It cuts back over to Patrice. I'm just going to cast it again. Sagittario? Sagittario. 16. So you hit for with Sagittario's damage? Uh, 1d8 plus spellcasting ability modifier. So roll 1d8, and then your spellcast modifier then gives up 4 or 5? 6 plus... Is that the plus 3 here? Spell attack bonus? Or is that yeah, a, spell attack bonus. Plus 3, yeah. This is a transfer... Yeah, okay. It wouldn't be a charm. So you did... 3, 8 damage? 6 plus 3 is... Okay, so 9? Uh, okay. So you're down to... Nice, you got him down to 49 health. Okay, after you hit him, an energy arrow shoots from your wand, shooting through his sh its shoulder. The creature looks over, the energy dissipates, and it looks at you angry. This time, it will takes a step forward with a powerful lunge, goes to claw at you now. What's your AC? 11. 15. It hits for a Devastating. Three plus three plus the two is eight. I have one health left. Ayana, falling backwards out of fear. Again, barely able to say it. Cast Bombarda. Plus two. And it hits right on the dot of its AC. Hits. This thing takes a blast, causing it to fly. Ten feet back, taking. Bombarda is how much damage here, boys? Bombarda is one d ten. Ten, thank you. Let's go oh, nice! Eight damage. That's your thing. Okay. In that moment, after it gets up, it looks at you two, fury in its eyes. Once again, it charges. Oh no, it's Patrice's turn. Sorry, it's Patrice. Okay, go ahead, Patrice. So it's it's laying prone right now. So do, you I get, see, do I see anything around it, or is it just woods? 
It's just woods. And then you got the Chano Teal up above you just rattling, causing this intense, like, music. I like sort drums. Of, I want to sort of step at it and cast Sagittario for the third time. Hopefully. Holy shit, Sagittario! Or higher than that 13. Oh, six. You cast Sagittario. This creature, though, it just nimbly and flexibly maneuvers itself behind a bush just quickly like a like a small twig poking out from a bush and it morphs itself into that size and then pops back out dodging the arrow this time though it goes to finish what it started as it lunges at patrice with a powerful blow in that moment though you hear a powerful chant something from above you swings down a massive like being furry <laughs> it swings down booting possibly booting the hide behind the hide behind goes flying as this thing does a swinging kick into it it lands in front of you the uh the sasquatch lands in front of you holding a spear with a stone tip at the end and it kind of pushes you behind it with Ayana, with Ayana behind you. The hide behind and the Sasquatch begin in a very devastating and violent brawl. The hide behind goes to do a multi-attack, swiping and biting at the Sasquatch. It sinks its teeth into the Sasquatch for... Oh my god, the eight... One okay. plus two damage, so three damage, and then its claws go to strike, which also hits for 2d4. Two, two, two. It cuts into the hide behind, or the hide behind cuts into the Sasquatch for a heavy claw attack. And it sinks its teeth into the Sasquatch's shoulder, but barely gets through its thick hide. The Sasquatch grabs it by its nape of its neck, laying on another powerful chant. Goes to take its spear and stab it through the gut. 12 plus 3, and it does it for a devastating... Where's the D10 here? That's a D10. 6 plus 5... Damn. Stabbing its spear into its gut, it throws it back. The hide behind gets up with its wound from Sagittario in its gut. It knows when it's outmatched. Hot on all fours, it flees into the forest, disappearing. The Sasquatch looks at you and just, you can't understand it. It's like, <laughs> and Aeon is just like, like, Freaking out. She's over at Benedict right now, like, holding Yeah, I'm gonna go check on Benny. Make sure he's okay. Just so, you, like, yeah, see on and go towards him. So, she looks at you, she's like, I, I, he's not, he's not waking up, and she's pushing him, just constantly nudging him. He's not waking up. Do you, do you know how far we are to get back? I feel like I can lead the way if we, if we want to carry him back. So, Anna's like, we're probably, like, a 20-minute walk out. He's gonna bleed out and die before then. I've seen wounds like this. So the Sasquatch starts beating its chest and goes to pick Benedict up and it nods at you too. It's like, oh, oh, grunting and like pushing his head to the right. So like, go like, it, could we fit on him or just like following him? <laughs> just, so it just, it shakes its head and it's like, oh, and the AI's like, oh, I think it wants us to follow. Yeah, I'm just like, let's go. <laughs> he, I, I, we have to follow Benedict. <laughs> so it carries Benedict over towards a tree the tree has a carving in it. It's got like three marks, like just three straight lines. And then you notice it's got like at the root of the tree, it's got one of the Ilvermorny golden knot brooches at the bottom. So the Sasquatch lays Benedict down and he touches his hand on the root where the brooch is and Benedict disappears. Is that a quirky? So the Sasquatch nods. It's like, rrr, rrr. I want to look at Anna and just go. I want to sit, but as like, I'm running towards it. I just want to look at the Sasquatch and, like, say thank you, nod, and just give that as follow Benedict. So, as you say thank you, and you go to, like, touch the thing, it grabs your hand, and it puts something in your hand, and it backs away. 
You is it touch like a note. Like what is it's it? It's like a yeah, like a ripped piece of parchment. <laughs> <laughs> um. So as you exit through the port key with Aana, within your dream, you went through the port key, but for some reason your dream still has you at the scene where yeah. the tree is with the port key. And you can see in the distance, in the darkening of the forest, two green eyes glaring at the port key, or at the tree where the port key is, and it smiles. You wake up from your dream in that moment. There's two green the high behind's eyes glaring realizing that you guys just went through that tree you guys wake up or sorry you wake up from your dream lightning thunder roars the puck Woody knocks at the door and says alright guys six o'clock everyone get up Melvin looks over at you and he's like oh my god Patrice you're, you look like you jumped in a bathtub you realize you're, like, coated in sweat. Yeah. I had a scary dream last night. I heard I was, it was, like, a big thunderstorm. I'm going to go shower and get ready because I think I'll quench tonight. So, Melvin, this is a Saturday, by the way. So the quidditch will be around noon. So you guys do have some time. But Melvin says, after you say that, Melvin's like, I'm so excited for quidditch. Are you ready to save? Are you ready to stop that quaffle? Melvin... You think I look bad right now? Just wait until me tonight after this game. I guarantee you I'm going to look much worse. So Melvin nods. He's like, Brutus is going to kill you. And I'll die for the Thunderbird. For the Thunderbird <laughs> keep. For the Thunderbird nets. Melvin Rings. stands up, just like flexes at you, all excited. Yeah, I just want to laugh, but I have, I have a sad demeanor because I know I'm most likely going to get mangled. <laughs> like, I, my confidence isn't absolutely buzzing. Like, very nervous and shy. <laughs> Scared. But yeah, I want to go just clean myself up and get ready. You See had, if I can meet up with the rest of the team if they're just planning. And oh yeah, it. yeah for yeah. the yeah. So um, you guys do realize, you guys do remember, you do have an early tryout or a warm up match essentially to get yourselves warmed up. That will be before the match at noon, so it's around like ten. And it's six right now. Yeah, as you start to open, as Arthur starts to open his eyes and kind of get himself out of bed. Kiana walks in the room, and as you look at her, you flash back to a month ago. You've been sitting at Kiana's bedside in the hospital wing for a long time. It's probably like 9 o'clock. It's an hour past curfew, but you kept insisting to stay. But it's time to go back now. The Pukwudgie are very adamant. You need to go back. So as you get up and you start to leave, and you're at the door, you hear her voice, and it says, Arthur, is, is that you? I'm just gonna look back and be like, just uh, just came to stop by, just uh, get some rest, and then uh, I'll keep going. Oh damn! Damn! So, cuts back to current time. Kiana and you catch a glimpse, and she gives you a soft smile. I'm just gonna do like a a nod, and all that. So, uh, you see, she walks over to Finn, who's sleeping on the couch, and she, uh, she kind of crouches beside where you're sleeping on the, so you're sleeping on the couch, she crouches beside the couch, and she starts to, like, nudge your shoulder, she's like, hey, hey, you gonna get up? Yeah. So she's like, you, you nervous about the, uh, Quidditch game today? Why would I be nervous? I don't know. I know you're very confident. And what? What are your abilities? I don't play Quidditch. Why'd you sign up? I didn't. Fuck. I think the truth. What are we doing here? Holy fuck. Rewind, rewind, rewind. Holy shit. So you had two beers in your fucking I thought he was playing like around there. I was like, bro, what the fuck? Who signed me up? Who signed me up? I was like, is this some trick you got planned up your sleeve? Who was talking to you there? So that was Kiana. Kiana doesn't say Quidditch, sorry. Are you excited for... Oh, excuse me, are you nervous about transfigurations? Oh, no, 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 not really. It's not really much. 
to be nervous about. So she says, do you, do you think you're confident in your abilities with these spells? I think I'm all right. Just, just making flowers. I want to make a like, garden. Do I overhear this? this is this in the common area? Yeah, you're gathering your stuff to go to the shower. You overhear this. Well, yeah, what's the common? What's the um, what's the Transfigurations challenge for you guys? We have to make a garden. Is Kiana in? Are you, I want to ask her, are you also in the club? She's like, no, but I think I'm going to go watch... Um, I'm going to go watch Finn do his competition. So mm. Melvin, Melvin yells out, he's like, making a garden? That's lame. What are you doing tonight, Melvin? What, Melvin? So he puts his head down, he's like, I might hang out with Evelyn, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. You should, you should cheer us on in the crowd. I'll give you a shout out if I make a good save. I want to see you screaming out there, bud. So he's like, I will be out there. You, you can see that I'll be painted the colors of Thunderbird. And he flexes again. He's like, I'll be there, boys. <laughs> Let's go, Melvin. Um, when's the when's the Transfigurations thing then? Is it not during the game? It'll be after Quidditch before dinner, so um, around 4. So thank God you're not in Quidditch and Transfigurations. You might have missed it. And you're, what, making a garden? Really? Like, you have to do it all right now, or has it been a work in progress? Is it all? It's, it's the competitions all at once. Right? Oh, yeah, once, it's, yeah. Like, it's like a quick oh. thing. You'll be facing a uh, wampus. Okay. Everyone. Well, my mom used wampus. to make good, good gardens. Victoria. Well, she comes taught my room. dad how to at least. Oh That's shit. Right, right. Victoria comes in the room rubbing her eyes and she's like, "Doesn't Benedict know how to make good gardens?" Yeah, Benedict, I'm sure he does as well. Then I quickly want to turn back to Finn. What kind of, like, flowers are you planting? Like, what are you doing? Or do you just have to learn how to make it grow? Like, uh, you plant it, water it, grow it all at once. I don't know what the... I don't know what flowers I'm going to plant this time. We'll see. Victoria says, she's like, I'm going to come root you on, too. Thank you. I don't, um, know, I don't know if that's necessary, but thank you. If I'm not in the infirmary, I'll come. I'll check it out. Okay, sure, yeah. So Victoria looks I mean, at you guys, she's like, I honestly don't think you guys should play Quidditch. Your first years, it's a deadly sport. You could get badly hurt. And then what? Who's going to answer questions in class? Me and Finn? Yeah, you are. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm like, <laughs> I'm surprised you don't want to see me get hurt, Victoria. So she shrugs, and she's like, I don't know. You've been changing a bit. A little nicer. More than usual. You, you look, you can see Melvin... He kind of looks away uncomfortable, and you can hear him whisper something under his breath, but you don't hear what it is. Uh, I'm just going to respond back to Victoria. I'm like, I know when, uh, at least I'm trying to figure it out, I guess. Kiana smiles at you. She's like, we can see that, Arthur. We can see that. Yes. I just want, yeah, I just want to say, I want to sort of snicker at Kiana's comments. Not laugh at them, but just like the conversation in general and make my way to the shower. Locked in right now. You had a couple uh, stories down oh. into the uh, Thunderbird house showers. In there, apparently he goes to the bathroom a lot, is the older brother... Fucking damn it. His Hyrule. Hyrule? Hyrule. Thank you. Hiram. He's in there, he's washing his face, he looks over, and he's like, Oh my god, Patrice! Hyrule. You ready today? Yeah, are you, do you play Quidditch? I don't play. I'm more of a duelist than a Quidditch player. Yeah, you left us there too. What happened when you, when you were gone? Some buddy took my freaking wand. Oh, Hiram. Um, yeah, are you going to be cheering us on or what are you saying? Oh, I'll be there. I'll freaking be there, man. If uh, if one of the beaters get knocked out, I'm a sub in. So, That's oh, cool. not the greatest, but I'll do my best. If I get knocked out, you should come play Keeper instead. I heard you guys already have a sub. You got Abigail. She doesn't want to be there. I think you'd do a better job. And I feel like I'm going to go down. Trust in yourself. Brutus okay. might not be there. Uh, I can hope. I can hope. But yeah, I just want to get showered. So we intimidated by this man. Yeah, yeah. So he waves you over to the shower. <laughs> Slapped your ass. He's like, by the way, uh, <laughs> he's like, uh, by the way how's, uh, how's Finn doing? Finn? He's alright. He's doing the Transfigurations Garden today. So oh, he's, cool. he's in Transfigurations. Yeah. Interesting. 
Tell him uh, he needs to follow in Daddy's footsteps and join dueling. I don't know if he's gonna join. I would took his place when we were in dueling. It's such a weird thing so for he's him like, to say. Yeah, like when <laughs> have to follow in Daddy's footsteps. <laughs> He doesn't know he's the brother either, does he? No way. Yeah, no, no, no one would know. He wouldn't know that he's the brother. Oh yeah, no, yeah, we, we we knew in dueling, yeah. Oh really? Yeah, Hiram Stegheart, yeah. Oh, true. So um, Hiram's like, uh, yeah. So he says like, tell my brother to join dueling. Will you be there this time? Or no. He laughs. He's like, you know, make sure you understand who's superior. As I am your uh, elder. All right, all right, Iron. Yeah. So, <laughs> just a black guy for the Quidditch match. So, all right, hit the showers. So, Hiram leaves the bathroom. You start to shower. Back in the dorm room. Victoria gets dressed. Melvin gets dressed. You all get dressed. Um, is there anything you want to talk about before we move to the breakfast? Uh, can I make a roll to see if uh, I would remember? Arthos saying anything he'd eat before like a big like game day or anything like that. Like fucking a lot of carbs. A lot of carbs. Yeah, but like, was there a, like a goatee? I know it's a silly thing. I'm not asking for like benefits, just you know, character wise. A little superstition roll. Um. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to do a roll. I think okay. you would. Um, you remember him always talking about eating like a big meal of eggs if it was in an afternoon competition. He'd eat a big thing of eggs and a lot of toast. Yeah. So, is he still in the the showers now, or are you out? Yeah, he's out of the showers now. It's around 7-ish. Oh, okay, yeah. So, he, so Patrice has come back. Yeah, I, I just want to l- let him know. Like, I'm like, hey, my my brother was uh, very well known for his Quidditch, and uh, I know it's silly, but he always had this before any, like, game day, so. But yes, I need to eat a lot. Gain as much weight as I can. We'll see what we can do. Be as big as possible out there. So, um, because the competi- or because the, uh, the try not the tryout, warm-up, this is what you call it, yeah. is at 10, you guys should put your uniforms on, just so you're ready. Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> you're literally dressed like a freaking suited-up knight. You have yeah. padded gear all over and a helmet. You're in more lighter gear. Do you want to wear the goggles or no? I'll have the goggles with me, but I'm not going to have them on, though. No. Yeah, I can, I'm going to wear the goggles. <laughs> Sorry? I'm going to wear the goggles. You want to wear the goggles? Hell yeah. yeah. So Victoria's like, all right, are we going to eat some breakfast? Yeah, I don't know where the goggles right now, but they, they're like, I'm strapped. Just around your neck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So yeah, do you guys want to eat breakfast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, yeah. let's go yeah. eat. So, so you're saying eggs and toast. Yeah. Victoria and Kiana walk together as they guide the group down the staircase. As you guys are going around, there are Thunderbird students, older, younger, same age, or not younger, I guess same age as you guys and older, all standing around the spiraling staircases with their dormitory doors open, and as you guys come down their stairs, you just hear them chanting and cheering, Thunderbird! Thunderbird! You guys continue down the steps, people coming out of the rooms, patting you guys on the back, saying, we can't wait, we're ready for the game, wait for Thunderbird. As, as Arthur well, I like, you know, I'm not used to, like, the pause of reinforcement kind of like this, so mm-hmm. Arthur himself is kind of like, whoa. Well, yeah, I'm coming, kind of, like, not sure what to do, and just is like, what the, what the fuck, yeah, like. As you guys pass the bathroom a couple stories down, you see a Ronan come up brushing his teeth, he looks over at you guys, and he's just like, let's go, boys, we're ready. Oh, yeah, Ronan. Um, victory today. Sorry? Victory today. That's all I want to be saying. So Ronan, <sighs> he just keeps brushing his teeth. We're going to win this shit. <laughs> you see freaking, uh... Maxine, which again, just to kind of remind you of the looks. Um, very steady girl, very well built. She's got blonde hair done in a bun. Her eyes seem very mystical as they have a purple glow to them. She's the purple, purple eyed beater? Yeah. So she good, comes out said, too. Right? She's very good. She comes out and she's like, "You guys better not lose it for Thunderbird." And then she she looks at the guy and she's like, "I'm so sick of losing." Last year we had a straight zero and four loss. Yeah. Well, I, I'm I'm just gonna speak and be like, "I'm gonna do the best that I can as I myself want to even beat my brother's legacy." And what better than the traditionally worst team, right? <laughs> so as you say that, she stops brushing her teeth and she's like. Pulls her toothbrush out of her mouth. She's like, Arthos. You want to be better than Arthos? She starts laughing like a maniac. They're like gurgling, like choking on toothpaste, <laughs> spitting it off. She's like, you're one funny kid. And she walks away. I asked, what position did your brother play when he was out there? 
the, what's the one with the cloth? The, the, the chaser. Yeah, the chaser, yeah. Best, so she turns around and she's like, best scorer. He scored the all-time highest record for most points in a year, in his seventh year. Sounds like a keeper's nightmare, honestly. I'm glad he's not here anyway. <laughs> he was a keeper's nightmare. At the end of the game, he scored. by the end of the year, he scored 56 points. Oh, my goodness. That's a total of 560 points. That's in eight games. <laughs> That's unreal. One guy. <laughs> She's like, you'll never be like him. And she just walks away. Good thing, good thing you're the secret, then, I guess. Uh, get 100 <laughs> points each golden stick. 150. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, you got to catch it every time, then. 115, 30, 45, 60. I can catch, catch it all four times in a row. You beat his freaking record of points. Fuck. <laughs> That's hard. That's actually insane. Well, I can catch it multiple times in a game. That you can only catch it once. Once you catch the golden snitch, it ends the game. No, it doesn't. Yeah, I, it does. I thought it only adds 100 points. It adds 150 points and it ends the game. Oh. That's why you got to be careful because there has been a Krom in the big world tournament. Yeah. Um, Ireland was leading Bulgaria 170 to 10. Yeah. And when Krom caught the snitch, it put them up 150 points, but it ended the game. So it put them Bulgaria to 160, but Ireland still had 170. So Ireland won. So realistically, <gasps> excuse me, he's a dumbass for catching the snitch. Anyways, careful when you catch it. When are we going to be up? I guess we'll be down that much, I guess. They'll be down, all right. It's Brutus still- is playing. Yeah, let's see. You guys get to the breakfast table and you can see people are already starting to paint themselves the house colors. They're freaking stoked and ready. You see players from Thunderbird, they pat you on the back every time you walk by. It's actually getting kind of annoying because you're trying to eat and all you feel is like a, like a heavy pat and you start to choke up your food. But you see the whole assembly is just a riot. Just everybody's talking about Quidditch. Even the professors are dressed up ready, all painted up. I'm just gonna get up with my uh, food, and I'm just gonna go up to like the change room or something there, and just Ooh. just wait. I'm not a fan of all this all like, the cheering, all, all this cheering. Arthur himself's going through shit, and then just with everyone going up, Taj and all this stuff. I'm just yeah, I love just, it. Who's uh, are you, like painted in Thunderbird colors? If there's anyone, yeah, I forget who it was. What are color? Navy blue, red, and yellow. Yeah. So, people painted in Thunderbird colors. Your boy, the myth, the man, the legend, Krogast. Krogast. Tell me Lovekins is Thunderbird. <laughs> That's cool. Um, and then Silas is also Thunderbird. And for some reason, you guys did not expect it, but he is more than painted than anybody. He's literally got his gown undone with the colors on it and a TB on his chest. Silas? Silas. Okay, okay. So you can see this guy's a huge sports fan. Huge Quidditch <laughs> fan. Oh, the Um, You can even see Azini, despite her sus demeanor recently, she's also pretty pumped up. You see she's, uh, she's got, like, the Quidditch flags all around her, and she's looking around the assembly very happy, smiling. So, Kiana turns to you, and she, she kind of touches your hand. She's like, are you, um, does it bother you that no one's kind of talk about transfigurations? No. Not at all. <laughs> She's like, you don't like attention on you? No. I don't need it. So, she, um, she looks at, uh, Patrice, and she's like, what about you? Do you like the attention? Honestly, it's, uh, this is the be- probably the best part of the day of the day right now. Just everyone, the excitement. So... I hope that I'm still alive by the end of the day, so I'll enjoy this happiness around me while I can. Nice. After you say that, the happiness, in the corner of your your eye, you can see Benedict sitting down. He's got his arm done up in a cast. He's got bandages wrapped around his, uh, his chest as well, and his gown is slightly open. And he sits down at the table, and you can see as you look at him, Ayana is also staring at you from the table in front. You see me just in the gear, eh? Yeah. So you see, you know, she looks at you. She looks back at Benedict, looks back at you, and she kind of looks down, kind of a bit looking upset. I kind of make eye contact with her, ben, her Benedict, too, eh? Yeah, so Benedict's got his back to you, so he's not able to. But Ayana, you keep trying to, like, stare at her, and she looks up at you. And you can kind of see her eyes look a bit watered. I just want to give her a long stare, and then just look down at myself. 
And I realize like I'm sort of done, and I'm just assuming Arthur's left already. Yeah, yes. So I want to look back at her, and then just like look at myself, like I said. Look back at her, and then just turn around and go back to the what's called like the train dressing room. Training area or yeah. dressing room? Cool. Cool. Damn. Yeah. Um, as you're getting up, you hear someone call out at you. They're like, Patrice, Patrice, wait up. All right, I'll look for who it is. You turn around, and it's Benedict running up to you with his arm, like, done in the cast. And he goes, and he's, he's like, good luck in the game, man. Good luck. Thanks, Benedict. I hope you're, reco- you're recovering. You're so, recovering well. He's like, I'm not doing too bad. He's like, my chest is still really sore. The doctor says, like, I'm healing good, though. Yeah, we got you out of there that night. It was, it was a crazy experience seeing that hide behind. So he puts his hand up, and he's like, we won't talk about it right now. I don't want to ruin your game, uh, your game face, but... It's definitely something we do need to talk about. I know Aeon has been avoiding us for the last month. So say, all right, thanks for your luck. I'll probably need all of it. Good luck against Brutus. So, as you guys are exit, you can see Arthur up ahead making his way towards the training room. Oh, sorry, making his way to the exit to head to the stadium for the training. And as he's uh, exiting, you have to pass by the Wampus Tower. As you pass Brutus... The legend himself comes out. Six foot five man, dressed in his gear. He pushes his shoulders forward, then back. He's got buzzed hair, large bug-like eyes, chiseled chin, and just a massive body. He walks out. As you grab on the door, he grunts, and he's like, First year, I'm going to kill you today. And um, I'll look at him be, uh, be like, uh, you don't seem too bad, you know. I mean, but everyone wants to uh, go after a gray, so. So Brutus, he just laughs. Like, I don't blame them. You've made a name for yourself. Oh, everyone's got to do something. So Brutus kind of cracks his neck, and he's like, you know, I'm not liking your attitude, kid. There's no attitude, just having a conversation. You stopped and said something to me. So he grabs your shirt. And he's like, that's what I thought. There is no attitude here. But in that moment, strong grip on his shoulder. You're, and you can see Arthos is behind him. He says, do we have an issue here, student? And when Brutus turns around and sees it's Arthos, he goes pale as a ghost. He's like, no, no, Mr. Ar- no, 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 Arthos. Puts his head down like a dog that's scared. Arthos nods. He looks at you. He's like, Arthur, back to what you were doing, please. Thank you, head of security. <laughs> God, do, am I there yet or where am I yeah you caught up now you've seen that you caught up I do I do want to say to uh, I, before I go I'm going to be like you happen to uh, are you going to catch the game I am definitely going to catch the game I will have Womp or uh, Pukwudgie there to also be security but I will be catching it and he smiles and he's like go Wampus Always stay true to the heart, huh? <laughs> Always true to the heart. And he looks at Brutus and he pats him on the shoulder again and squeezes again. He's like, I hope you do well, Brutus. But remember, and he points at you and Arthur and he's like, he's off limits. So Brutus just gives him like a nod. Oh, that's big shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I, I see that. I just want to look at him and be like, the reign of Wampus is over. <laughs> you're not off limits yeah, you're, you're so Brutus Brutus you. looks he's like is he off limits Arthos looks at you he's like sorry kid can't save y'all <laughs> oh I just want to laugh and walk through the room so I saw I saw how Brutus was embarrassed by him right? that was, yeah there you go, I just, no, I'm not <laughs> intimidated intimidated by him anymore uh, I love it so Arthos wait says, so did he has he gone in to what, the arena? Yeah. No, you guys he, are just about to No, but had, did he go by us yet? Or Oh, he's with you guys. Oh, he's with us? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like... Okay, yeah, never mind then. <laughs> like, turn around, like, I'm not bothered by that shit. So Brutus heads back to the Wampus Tower. Arthur starts to walk away. You guys want to make your way over to the arena? Yep. Yeah. Love it. What is Finn doing? Is he going to go watch? Mm, we're allowed to do anything right You're allowed to do whatever the fuck you want. We'll go hang out with Silas, do some transfigurations training, go talk to Lau, go make out with Victoria. Uh, We're 11, yo. Uh, that's just a meme now. I hope someone makes it into a meme. You're 11, man. I hope they don't. 
probably go talk to Lau again. Feel comfortable there. I'd imagine you probably spent some time here last month. Yeah. Oh. So. Funny enough, I just realized you didn't look at that note. So I'm interested to see what you, uh, that'll be a big reveal. You make your way over to Lau. She's in her classroom looking at tables. She's got her glasses on. She's just very focused on her papers, looking through them all, flipping through textbooks, cutting back over to a map. Doesn't even realize you're there. Sushina's at a desk studying in front of her. I just don't realize I'm there at all. Oh, they're just super focused on what they're doing. I just knock then. You knock, yeah. Sushina looks up and she smiles and she's like, oh, Finn. And then she looks at the ground very shyly with her face going red. And Lau looks over at you. She's like, oh, Finn, what can I help you with today? And she kind of pushes herself up from her desk. Well, I didn't expect Sushina to be there right now, so this is kind of... So Lau's like, is this a private thing? I can ask my daughter to leave. Oh, well, maybe. Maybe, maybe quickly. This is no issue. She's like, okay, Sushina, can you step outside, please? So she, she yeah. nods, and she walks by you. She's like, no, no, no problem, Finn. And she shyly walks by you, closing the door behind her. So Lau's like, what, what can I help you with, Finn? I haven't told her. I haven't told her anything. That's something that you and I need to keep a secret between us. No one else can know about this. Okay. okay. But I was thinking about what you were saying when we went down there, that I need to train more before we explore this any further. Can you train me? She smiles. She says, of course I can. And I have just the person to help us with it. Cutting back over to the arena. You guys get into the arena. Your team is starting to arrive with you. You guys are ready. Your team, though... Looks kind of stoked, but very nervous. Uh, I want to say before they get to Patrice and I, I want to look over to Patrice and be like, you know, first time in my uh, my life that uh, I'm not that confident going in. Oh yeah, I don't think we should be, but hey, I think this is our time. We have a, no, we have our expectations are not high. All we have to do is perform. Just be make natural. It, make there. a name for ourselves. Exactly, this is where the legacy starts. If, uh, and that, same, Arthos, I want to ask if Arthos, not Arthos, yeah, Arthos can get the most points scored, I'll get the most saves made or something. All records are meant to be broken. Yeah. And then I want to say, hope you do, and go off for like a warrior class kind of thing and say Thunderbird. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I want to embrace. I love it. Thunderbird as well. The team arrives, seeing you guys clasp. And a Ronin's like, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, <laughs> everybody, everybody gears up and they hop on their uh, broomsticks again, guys. It is thundering out and pouring rain. Shit. What a day for Quidditch. Are we are we in the air yet or no? You guys are getting in the area. You're starting to fly around, trying is to get like, grips. Is there anybody calling for like a big team speech or no? Like I want to gather us one last time as together. Sure, gather the guys. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to, like, sort of fly around and wave to Ronin and hope people follow. Yeah, Ronin, Maxine, <laughs> Etzin, Malcolm, and Julia all surround you. Ronin, Maxine, Etzin. Who's the other one, sorry? Um, Malcolm and Julia? Malcolm. Malcolm. Malcolm, for you guys, just to kind of give you guys a reminder of what they look like. Malcolm... Malcolm Vanity, a third-year boy, doesn't look like he belongs on the team. He's taller, but looks extremely awkward. His hair is parted in the middle, and his freckles make him look even more shy. He looks like a very timid individual. Kind of like a loner. Just a very tall, scrawny boy. Maxine, again, sturdy, very well-balanced, blonde, with mystical eyes. Etzin. A six-year student, he's clearly eager and ready. You see, he just looks ready to kill on his broom. He's like is, the most... Is he a beater or is he a scorer? He's a... Etzin is a chaser. <clears throat> okay. Mac, Malcolm's a chaser as well, and then Julia's a chaser. And Julia's an energetic girl who appears very calm and collected. 
She's on her broom. She flies very slowly towards you guys as if there's no rush to hear this speech. Who's, wait, who's Julia? Is that Julia, sir? This is Julia. She's okay. a chaser. Chaser as well. Okay. Sorry. I just wanted to, if we're like, sort of gathered around, yeah, I yeah. say, here we are. This is our time, guys. No matter what happens on this pitch, on this field, we're going to represent Thunderbird with pride. I love it. Okay, give me a charisma roll. This is charisma, not persuasion or anything. 12. Charisma's 2. Cool, so. 14. I love it. They hear you. You see their, their frowns, I, their demeanor, everything. I wanted to There's say, after you up. started saying that, just slowly start. Thunderbird. Thunderbird. They start chanting with you. So they start chanting with you. The whole team just like gives like a loud hoorah. You can see the other team is starting to approach the side wampus. And as they enter, they're doing the same thing. They did it first. Chanting, <laughs> chanting louder, though. Brutus looks up at you guys, and he just looks. He's got his kill face on. Cut him over to Finn. Laos says, I have the perfect person to help you with your training. Because I'm a teacher, I might not have all the time available to give you my full um, commitment and attention. But I know someone who can. So while you train with me, I'm going to have... And Kubo comes around from the desk, and he's like... <laughs> so he's like, Kubo will help you with a lot of stuff. He can, he, can do, he can do magic? He can definitely do magic. Kubo, and she hands him her, uh, her wand, and Kubo goes... <laughs> and he casts a spell that causes the desks, to st- all the desks, to start levitating. That's sick. <laughs> so is he... So... Is he going to be with me a lot of time? Like, is he just allowed to hang out with me? Yeah, so I, I will tell everybody that Kubo is helping you with History of Magic. And uh, I've given him as a pure uh, personal tutor. So he's like, he's like my friend now? He's your pet, bro. Sure. <laughs> no, I'm saying, I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't want to say that. Let's say so he's your friend, but I will be with you when you need me. But when I yeah. can't, Kubo will be there. Because... Kubo doesn't have the knowledge that you have yes. in terms of history of magic. And you knew her more better than anyone. She's like, I did. You can see that kind of makes her sad. She's like, I did. We don't have to talk about that right now. But it's good that like, we have this. We have this. Uh, so she pulls out some papers. She's like, I'm starting to map out the labyrinth right now. Though obviously we don't have a blueprint to it. Ramor did have a couple notes on it. So I, there is a beginning area mapped out. However, he has these strange areas I have no recollection of. None of his work talks about. But she hands you four maps. Each one of them with a symbol. One of them designated a fire, earth, wind, and the other one doesn't have a symbol with it. The water? She's like, possibly. That would make sense. Well, I thought, I, saw, I thought the one we saw in the thing had water, but not earth. The one I saw in the room had water. Yeah, so she's like, interesting, um... It's interesting that the gate showed earth. No, showed water? Yeah, the one in the History of Magic room showed water. But not earth. Yeah, yeah. It's so, fire, water, and air. So she's like, interesting. She's like, I wonder what that means. I wonder what that means. <laughs> but the one she has didn't have the water on it. Didn't have the water. So she's like, I don't know what this is a map to. I have no freaking clue. Where did you get this map from? She's like, it was in some of his old work. However, between you and me, I had to kind of go into the old archives within the headmistress office, but that's between you, me, and Thorn. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. So this is all you have right now? This is all I have. This is all the documentations. Um, and remember, I want to remind you too as well, Finn, don't tell anybody you're a parcel tongue. I don't even know what that means, so we're fine. She's like, well, sit down, you little chode. I'm going to tell you a story. She didn't call you a chode, but she's like, sit down. I'm going to tell you a story. So she says, because your bloodline is that of the Gaunts, you have the ability to speak to snakes. The snakewood tree is made up of Salazar Slytherin's wand, which means you are the only one... Other than the Gaunts, but they're all in the United Kingdom, you are the only one at Ilvermorny in the North American region, as far as I know, that can activate Salazar Slytherin's wand and get inside the Snakewood Tree. 
The theory is with Remora's work is that the Sneakwood tree has a massive labyrinth, a root system that leads down to a core. That core is the wand. The tree grew from the wand. The wand is a seed. The labyrinth has to lead to it. And if we can get to that wand, solve a lot of issues. Okay. However, that won't be for a long time as we don't know how massive this labyrinth is, nor do we know its challenges. I don't know if Remora built the traps and the puzzles or if someone else did. But from what I know of the history of magic records, there's a lot of artifacts down there as many different families that came to North America when they immigrated gave us Zolter artifacts to hide. So there's a lot of things down there we gotta be careful of. Which means, and she pops a massive encyclopedia in front of you, means you have a lot of reading to get started on if we're to do this. Okay. Kubo walks up to you with like a parchment and a pen, and he looks up at you, he's like, and he puts it down in front of you. So she's like, do you need coffee? I don't know what you drink, you're 11. Some pumpkin juice. The kids don't get hay. Pumpkin spice latte. Pumpkin spice latte. Like water should be good. So she's like, Kubo? And Kubo nods, <laughs> and he leaves the room. Give <laughs> 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 water like that. Running over to the arena. People are starting to pour into the stadium as it gets near the time. I'm sweating, man. Holy yeah. shit. You're not going to be there? It's fucked up. As it gets near the time, people start to pour into the arena. You can see Melvin on one of their Thunderbird Towers, just like within the arena, just cheering his shirts off. The rain is starting to wash away his paint, but he doesn't care. He's just like, ah, go Thunderbird! Like the loudest guy. Everybody else in Thunderbird is just kind of like minding their own business. They don't seem like they give a crap because they all probably have the self-fulfilling prophecy that you guys are going to lose. Can I just look at uh, the Wampus house or is it too far away? You can look at the Wampus It's like the tower where yeah, all the... the tower. It's filled. Absolutely okay. filled. And they're freaking making the whole tower shake because they're stomping their feet, clapping. So I'm assuming I don't see Aeon in it at all. Or you, can, you fly by it on your broom and you can see Aeon is there. I just want to sort of give a stick at it everyone every house and go through like Puck Wedgie as well and then zip back to the net and just sort of show them film. Yeah, so you walk and you just fly by Puck Wedgie. You can hear, you hear Benedict's voice. He's like, let's go Patrice! I just want to like shake my head sort of like now really feeling hype. Oh. The confidence from the boys. You fly back to the net covering it. Lau looks at you. She's like, I think the Quidditch game's going to start. Do you want to make your way over or are you going to study the encyclopedia? So she's like, Kubo, um, stay with him. So Kubo <coughs> nods. Lau gets up, and uh, she asks Sushina if she wants to come too, but Sushina's like, I'm not really into Quidditch, and she chooses to stay with you as well. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> Can I, I want to fly up to uh, Arthur, actually. I'm going to say, are you keeping an eye out for uh, uh, Brutus out there, or what, what's your plan to defend, to defend from him? I gotta keep my eyes out for a lot of people out there, and as well as the scoreboard and the snitch. So, yeah, I would say play more in the defensive zone, and I can help you out with like, because I'm gonna keep an eye out on Brutus. Look, as much as I appreciate that, I don't want you to worry about me at all here. Uh, need to, of course, deal with yourself, but as well as what's being thrown at you. I know I have a lot on my hands, but I'm more so just don't want to die, and I feel like he's the guy that's gonna kill me. <laughs> so I'm gonna make sure I'm always looking at him, as yeah. well as the ball too, but. I'm honestly going to be focused on him, mostly. Aronin flies up. He's like, there's no need to be nervous, boys. We got this. We got this. Uh, so I'm looking at Aronin and be like, all right. Of, you of course. Yeah. Steadily flying by you guys, Julia, on her broom. She's like, we're going to lose so bad here. We're going to lose. I want to look at uh, Aronin and be like, you got a handle on uh, Brutus tonight or what? So Aronin looks over. He's like, I'm going to, you know what? I'm finally going to take him. And he stops talking. He looks over. You see Wampus, every player is lined up along the middle of the line, staring you down. Every one of you down with these, like, pissed off faces. So Ronan's like, I'm going to finally take him. <clears throat> and you see Brutus, he's just staring at Ronan. Ronan's like, I'm going to practice more drills. And he starts to fly, like, do some figure eights and stuff to get ready. But they're all sitting there or, like, on their up? brooms. Sorry? Like, do we have to line up too? Is that no, you don't have to line up. They're just, wanna, just doing that to intimidate. I want to be like, oh, well, at least this feels normal. 
this is, I have these looks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I want to fly up and just go around the rings and just get comfortable with like. You want to fly around the whole arena or just your no, side? No, I know my rings. I oh, okay, rings. okay, your rings. Okay, I see. So you're flying around, you're getting uh, comfortable with it. Um, Maxime comes up, and she's like, "Listen, I got you. I'll be your defense. You keep your eye on the you keep your eye on the quaffle. I got you. If you think you can handle Brutus, I trust you." And so I'll... she looks over. She says, "I'm not afraid of him. A Ronin is, but I'm not." All right, Maxime, I'll keep that quaffle as much as I can. Good. So. You guys hear the whistle. Azini flies up on her broom. She's like, all... Or, sorry, both teams, to me. Wampus is already there. There, They don't budge. They just stare you guys down. Thunderbird lines up. Azini says, I want a clean, fair game, guys. She looks at Brutus. She's like, that means... Try to reduce how many times you elbow the other players, Brutus. And he just snorts. <laughs> so, Azini... She's like, all right. She looks at both teams. She's like, are you both ready? Just want to give me a quick nod and then, you know, posture up on my stick. Good. At the bottom, someone opens up the suitcase containing the balls and they all fly out. The quaffle shoots up a good 150 feet in the air and as it drops, Izini flies back. She's like, let the game begin. Okay. I want to look exactly for that snitch. Okay. I'm so doing, early I'm, in the I'm game, the very difficult roll. It's going to be a 25. I don't think... I can't get that. Yeah. It's impossible. Yeah, it's very hidden at the beginning of the game. Oh, okay. So just keep your eyes peeled yeah. for feeders. Yeah. <laughs> so your keeper, so you're back at net. Yep. So let's see. The chaser, Malcolm's going to go for the ball. I want... David, do you want to roll for the chasers or the beaters? I'll roll for the chasers. Actually, I'll so roll for the beaters because beat. I want to have Maxine. Defense. Okay, yeah. so beaters, you're going to roll for the chasers. Roll the d20 for the chaser. Malcolm's going to try to get the quaffle. What is it? Oh, it's two. Okay. Obviously, yeah. Brutus. Um, <laughs> immediately, I, I already. as it. Malcolm goes for the ball, Brutus smashes the ball towards him, stopping him in his tracks. The ball doesn't hit Malcolm, but it stops him. He quickly veers. Wampus gets the quaffle. One of the players, a stocky individual, ginger hair, he's wet hair, he's not wearing a helmet, his wet hair's just flowing in the wind. Thunder flashes, kind of blinding you for a second. When your eyes open, this guy is just flying down the field at a great speed. You see a Ronin going in, trying to just ram him, check him. So he's a beater, so roll for him against this guy's oh. AC. I, I rolled when he told Jared roll as well, and I rolled a 14. I don't know if it was like a simultaneous roll. or it, was, it wasn't, so roll again. Roll again, okay. A one. <laughs> oh, a Ronin goes to ram into him. But with a Ronin thinking he's doing a great play, he goes at him. You see this this ginger haired boy smiles. A Ronin goes at him. The beater ball comes out hitting a Ronin in the head. Knocking him. <laughs> Ten plus five damage. A Ronin. Gets hit in the head. Daze. He starts to spin towards the ground. Slamming against the earth. Azini chanting. And it looks like the first player is out by Brutus. Brutus is player. He starts to come towards you. You see Maxine this time though. As for that ball hit off Ronin. She goes and she slams the ball after a ricocheted. Roll for her. Against the guy's AC. 14. Plus her 317. Hits him. As he's going to go with the ball, she hits the ball, and it hits him directly in the hand, causing the ball to fly out, and the guy recoils in pain. The ball flies, and Edson grabs it, taking it down the field. Maxine looks back to you. She's like, I got to defend him. Are you going to be okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Maxine flies off. Thunder roars more. Lightning <laughs> crackles along the sky. Oh my god. Edson charging oh. forward. Two of the beaters on their team rally up and start to collide with him. Maxine, though, hits a ball. Roll again for her. 15. Hits a ball, slamming into the back of one of the players, causing them to topple down. Not done, but they just topple downwards. 
causing Maxine to go in and start elbowing the other beater, getting Edson free. However, Brutus was the other player she elbowed. Brutus with his great strength. Oh my god. After receiving the elbow, he immediately just boots her, like flies up and boots her in the head. Oh, what's her AC? Oh shit, four? Goes a boot. However, she drops her broom down, dodging the kick. Edson goes in against his keeper. Roll. Two. No! <laughs> he throws the ball. The keeper grabs it, lobs it up. And one of the chasers on their team go to catch it. However, Julia, positioning herself perfectly, goes to intercept your chaser. Yeah. Roll for Julia to oh, intercept. No. 11. Yeah, 11. Plus. She intercepts the ball, <laughs> grabbing it. That moment, she quickly goes forward, trying to get the goal. Nine. Plus three. Right on the dot. So she aims four, depending on which one she aimed for. Four, he's at one. She aims. The ball goes in. The quaffle goes in the net for 20 points. Let's go. Big lead, big lead. Angry. Brutus oh, no, no. looks over. <laughs> Brutus goes like this. And all of them rally. The ball, the quaffle flies out to one of the uh, players. And they all rally out. The two bludgers, or the two um, beaters... Brutus and the other beater rally in front of the one player and they start to go up like a triangle formation. Maxine, she comes back to you. She's like, I'm with you. The chasers can't do anything. They can't get by Brutus and the other beater. In this moment, they break formation, pushing against the defense. And he goes, the chaser goes for the shot at you. Maxine goes to defend Actually, no, Bruce goes to hit the ball at you. Maxine goes to defend. So roll for Maxine hitting the ball. Five. Oh, the ball. It, if she goes to hit it, she misses, and it comes right at you. Thunder flashes in that moment, and she misses the, the bludger completely, and it flies at you. So this is the moment where you can choose to use your bonus action, or you can try to roll to defend against it. I would roll against you, yeah, actually. I, so we get yeah, the plus I, two AC. Yeah, Okay, so plus your AC, which, that puts your AC to what? What's your AC currently? 11. That's 11. Wait, was this the stay in my spot, or was that the plus 3 AC? Your AC, by the way, is with your broomstick flying, which is 3, so it's 13. So your AC right now is your broomstick flying rather than just your basic dex. Oh, really? Yes, yeah, so your broomstick oh, flying is 3. So it's your broomstick, which is 1. one, but I have the... So that's 3, because it gives you a plus 2. So you have a 3, yeah. so yours is 13. So is that on top of my, is that Oh that's a fifteen now because of your uh bonus action. No. Pretend your AC's not there, your AC okay. is your broomstick flying. Okay. So eleven plus five is sixteen. Even in your defensive stance, this yeah. beater ball comes some mashes into you. You try to bolster yourself for it, but you couldn't. It's, D12. it's not the D twelve. Four damage plus his five is nine damage. I'm um, that's on I'm done. So you get smash hard. Do a con save, please, to keep yourself in the air. Fourteen. You're plus. good. You're good. Okay. So mine. Scratch it when your con saves. Uh, right here. Yeah. Scratch the top on the six. The ball hits you. You become dazed. You start to fly downwards. However, you recollect yourself. He goes. The other player goes to throw the quaffle into your net. You're off the post, so you have disadvantage on this. He goes for the second net for 20 points. Do a deck save now to save the freaking ball. Seven plus one is eight. No. Quaffle goes through the net, and Wampus gets 20 points. So I shake my head all days and just, like, so get myself back ready right in front of the... Beautiful, net. man. Good, yeah. You're yeah. still in it. You're still <laughs> in it. A Ronin flies back up and he looks hurt. He's like, I'm back. I'm, I'm good, guys. I got this. Who do you want to throw the ball to? Or the quaffle? You can throw it to either Edson, Malcolm, or Julia. 
Oh, I want to give it to uh, Edson. Okay. You give it to Edson, throwing it to him. He's closest to you. They start to move up. Thunder roars again. The crowd is mm-hmm. cheering. Rain is pouring down. Brutus is coming right for this guy just to ram into him. However, a Ronin goes in. <laughs> he goes in and he collides with Brutus. 12 plus 3... A Ronin collides with him, causing a quick second for Edson to get by. Maxine flies forward, smashing a ball towards one of the players. Maxine's a beater, so roll for her. 20. Oh my <laughs> god! Smashing the beater ball with great strength. It smashes into Brutus. So a Ronin collides with him. Ball hits. As they collide, boom. You see him fall right off his broom and fly downwards. His eyes are wide, but white. He's knocked right out for a few rounds. Maxine sees that. Go! <laughs> Thunderbird! To the yeah, crowd right. that was silent. <laughs> Arthur, yeah, the crowd silent. Arthur, Thunderbird. The crowd right. silent at the tower for Thunderbird. Get up and start cheering. Edson goes forward. Roll. 19. He throws it, whipping it. It goes through the third hoop, scoring 30 points for Thunderbirds. Their keeper gets the ball angry. He whips it out. Close, though. So one of their players get it and start to move forward. Brutus is still knocked out. All of a sudden, though, I need you to do a wisdom save for perception. What's your wisdom save? Is it wisdom save? Yeah, because you're not paying attention. You just watch the goal. Uh, oh, here's the challenge. Uh, where's the wisdom even? Wisdom uh, saves are up. Uh, sh- oh, it'll be saving wisdom, throws. Yeah. The saving throws. Okay, it's a plus three. Okay, nice roll. Has to be higher than a thirteen. It's fifteen. Dice, Beautiful. So, yeah. The ball. You see it coming quickly. <laughs> it moves past you. The bludger though moves past you, but the beater comes at you to check you. So you're gonna have to do a deck save now. Oh, my. God. Uh, get out of the way, <laughs> man. 19. You get out of the way. This beater's too focused on chasing you, making sure you're not getting near that snitch. It starts to chase you down, giving your team an extra advantage with defense. Do I, is, do I see a snitch or anything? Roll perception. Okay. Uh, perception. Again, it's high now. It's going to be a 20. Okay, I can do this. Perception is 3. Does Quidditch fan or anything with that help or no? No. Okay. Oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. 10 plus no. three, yeah. So you haven't seen it yet, but you're keeping your eyes open as you're I zooming around with this, hype, with right. this guy <laughs> chasing you. As they move in, Maxine and Aronin team up. Maxine once again hits the ball as Aronin goes in for another check play. Roll for both of them. 19. 13. Aronin <laughs> checks into the guy, causing the Quaffle to fly up. As one of the other Wampus players to go to grab the Quaffle, Maxine smashes the Bludger Ball. Flying right towards the guy. However, one of their beaters go to block the ball and succeeds, allowing the other Wampus guy to get the quaffle because defensively they smashed the ball away. Yeah. Grabs the quaffle, moves in towards you now. He goes to aim. Which which hoop are you protecting right now? Uh, the minus one, five and six. Some the big different. points? Yeah. Oh, no, that, was, that would be the easy points. No, that's minus one AC. So that's the big points. That's what you wrote. Minus one. Minus one AC, but it's one point. So th- this is 30. This is 20. This is 10. Because it's the biggest hoop. It's the easiest to get through. More oh. territory to protect. But that's why you get the minus one AC because it's more to cover. But it's only oh, 10 points. It's only 10 points? Yeah, it's yeah, like the biggest net. I'll still stay there. Okay, you'll still stay there? Okay, so... Oh, sorry. Hold on. So if he rolls a... It's a 5 to 6 for five that one? Six, yeah. So if he rolls a 5 to 6, you get advantage. He rolled a 6. So you get advantage on it. Or he would get disadvantage, yeah. rather. Oh. Eight. He's not getting it. So eight. So the ball comes right towards you. Guy made a stupid play. You get the ball. Unless you want to hit it out. What do you want to do? What kind of stylistic thing do you want to do? I want to get the ball, and I sort of see... Uh, do I see... Like, who's the furthest away from these? Arthur is the furthest away being chased by a beater. Um, like that I could pass to the chasers. Like, are they... Yes, <laughs> Malcolm's in the middle of the uh, field. In the middle? <laughs> <laughs> Malcolm's in the middle. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, I want to. I want to make a stretch pass to Malcolm if he's. I want. I don't want to do it to the closest person, but I want to sort of make a, uh, like a riskier throw. Like okay, a riskier throw. Okay, give me a dex roll, please. Sixteen. Plus yeah, you four. got it. You lob it out. Yeah. Lightning flashes through the sky over the ball. Malcolm gets it spinning around. He goes. The beater being chased by Arthur turns around and makes his way towards him. I want to make perception roll the second that guy leaves me as well because now I have more room to, right? Six, yeah, it's not right. You do that. You start looking around the field. However, you don't see anything yet. The beater heads right towards Malcolm. Malcolm goes for it, though, aiming at the smaller hoop. Oh, sorry. Oh, he rolled a fucking 20. I think you were supposed to roll for that, but yeah, let's count the 20. Yeah. He whips the ball in, and as it take, goes take for that. it, the guy was guarding that hoop, but as it goes for it, it spins and curves towards the, the smallest hoop, getting That's another hype. 30 points. That's hype. A little fucking cheddar on it. Bend it like Beckham. Bend it like Beckham. 80 to 20. It's at 15 now. Give me another perception roll for the snitch. Oh. So it's at 15 and it's a perception? Yeah. Fuck! Dude, what is <laughs> this? Get? Why do I get these rolls? I got a, a 9 plus 3, so... Yeah. Uh, what you do notice, you don't see the snitch, but you see their keeper is low towards the crown. Their keeper. Their seeker. Their seeker is low towards the ground, chasing something. I'm gonna just... Be lying towards him. Okay. In that moment... As you beeline towards him, you see it's flickering through the rain in front of this guy. And he's fast. He's a six-year. He's got a really good broom, and he is getting close to it. Maxine notices this. She's like, Arthur needs help. Are you going to be okay? Yeah, leave me back here. I think they saw the snitch. They're chasing something. So she's not. She's, I think so, too. She flies away. In that moment, as she leaves the defensive zone, they're coming towards you guys. In Dota, this is known as a bad play. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, want, I, want, I just want to sort of posture up, like, sort of in front of the ball so I can make a, a sort of... Actually, no, because then if I'm... Am I agile when I get the plus, my bonus move? Yes, you are, yeah. I'm still agile? Okay, so I want to, like, play up front a little bit. Not, okay, which hoop are you covering? All of them? I, no, I'm going to more so stay, like, in the central, yeah. Oh, but, I love but, it. A little bit further up, you know? Okay, I love it. Like, playing at aggressive angles. So roll the four, so he's going for the second one. So then you get a zero to your AC. Yeah. Okay, so roll. Ten. Plus your defense, which is your broom is three. Thirteen. Yeah. On the dot. <laughs> Guy whips the ball. The way he's coming at you from a diagonal, you're watching him. There's another beater that kind of you stop to check to see what was going on, but you look back, the ball's coming towards the second hoop. However, you quickly drop down on your broom and you get it. You get the ball, I you stop catch it. it, you catch it. You catch the quaffle. I want to catch the quaffle and see. Uh, see who's open. Yeah, Maxine. I guess I can't pass Maxine. If there's anyone, Edson just... and Malcolm and Julie are all very close to you as they're coming up with the other people with the quaffles. I want to sort of go to the space um, where they're not. Like, are they all in less than one area? Or are they sort of separated? Um, Malcolm and Edson are grouped up, but then Julie's off to the side with one chaser near her. The other two have two chasers near them. I'm gonna go towards like where we have the numbers, and like where there's two of them. So oh, are you gonna go out of the zone? I want I want to sort of fly with it a little bit and see if they'll like do they move towards me? Or they do they... move towards you. Specifically, the beaters go to smash a ball at you. So I, if I see this ball's going at me, I want to move it to Malcolm. So like like that closer, that close pass because he's close. Right? Oh, like, smart. Yeah. Okay, so the beater ball's going at you. I gotta do a roll. What's your AC? Is thirteen? I might remember. Yeah. 18. Cool. You throw the ball to Malcolm. Let's see if there's an Do interception, I'd... though. Don't, I'll beat you. <laughs> plus four Malcolms is an 11. You go to throw the ball to him. However, as it leaves your fingertips, as it's leaving, the bludger ball hits you, causing the ball to skew. And the wampus guy gets it. Malcolm can't grab it in time. The wampus guy gets it. And just rifles it at the biggest hoop. I didn't have to roll. You get it because you're not in the net. Um, rifles it and gets 10 points through the net. And you would take... So they're at 30 now. 
You would take another D12 fucking damage. Jesus. That's a nine. You need to do another con save, though. I do. This time it's above a ten. Fourteen. Good. Let's check your second one off. You get hit hard. You're holding on your broom. You spin upside down. You start to droop down towards the ground. However, you come back to pulling yourself up. You get back up. Malcolm flies towards you. I'm sorry, man. I should have had that. Yeah, I just... Don't stay close to group to anyone. I want three separate options. I don't want I don't want I don't want you guys all beside each other because it just makes you a bigger target. So Malcolm nods, okay, I got that, got that. So Malcolm flies out to the center, Julia, he nods over to Julia, Julia flies out to the right, and uh Edson flies out to the left. They each have their own chaser on them though, and the beaters are in the center of the two. Okay, so okay. imagine like five. Beater, beater, chaser, chaser, chaser. And they yeah. each have someone on them. Who do you want to throw it to? Oh, um, I went through it just like to Mal- is Malcolm there? Is they Malcolm's get- in the middle, yeah. Again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would I would no, I wanna get to the wing actually, not the middle of the middle. Okay. So you wanna throw it to Julia on the left or Edson on the right? I'll leave it to Julia. Okay. You throw it over to Julia, I need you to do a roll. Seventeen. Clean pass. She gets it. And it lands perfectly in front of her where she gets it and starts zooming forward. Arthur is an intense battle. What am, am I possibly see it. sorry? Is this this? He grab? sees it. No, he can't grab it. Yet. He sees it. He's behind this guy. He's, He's lagging a good like fifteen feet behind him. Yeah. So you gotta zoom up. There's rain coming down at you, and you can see now one of the beaters comes off and starts to come towards you. Okay. Okay. However, it's not just any ordinary beater. It's Brutus. Oh. Oh. You're near the edge of the wall. Oh, Brutus is coming towards you. You need to do a deck save, sir. Okay, okay. Uh, 11 plus 2. 13? Yeah. He comes at you. You look back quick. You go up. He slams into the wall, bouncing off. You zoom again. Behind, you see... This guy is about to get the snitch. Off limit. <laughs> so he's reaching for it. Out of nowhere, though... Maxine comes diving into this guy. Do you want me to roll for Maxine? Yeah, roll for her, please. 14. Baby dives into him, causing him to slam into the wall with her. Brutus, though, flies past you. After he bounces off the wall, he flies. You're above him. He doesn't even know, realize you're above him. Flies over, grabs Maxine by the nape of her neck, by the back of her neck. Nine plus five. And rips her right off her broom, throwing her to the ground. She hits the ground hard, rolling. That is six. Do I, do I see the snitch? Oh my god, Maxine hits the ground, knocked right out. Do I see the snitch? You're above, you're with the guy, you're right above him now. The snitch is in front of you guys. <laughs> oh no! Okay, okay, what, so what do I have to... What? You have to roll a No, bit. like, what's that? Is it broom? It's is dex. It, it's it's dex? Your, with, off of your broom stat. Oh, my broom stat's a four. Okay, so roll plus four. You need to roll a fucking 15 to get this snitch. Fuck! I saw it almost hit yeah. 18. Oh. 17. As he reaches for it, Thanks. you're both going for it. However, he's just a bit quicker. Didn't he get knocked out by uh, Maxine, like, to- taken off, and he was right with it? Did Maxine not body him? Yeah. Uh, Maxine did body him. Yeah. Bodied so. him. He's got a fast broom, though. So I'll do a recovery roll for him. He has a plus five. Plus this thing is eight. So that's a 12. Because so no, it wouldn't have. So he, he caught up to it, though, but he didn't grab it. So he's back in it with me. So he's back in it with you. He sees your grab and he catches right back up to you. Can I, go, I want to go for a kick in his dome. Do it. Okay. Strength, man. Well, let's go. It just, it's Watch this be the one you had. It's strength. It's strength. It's not acrobatics because I'm on no. the room. Oh, well, I mean, you what? can jump on it. You fucking... I don't even... You... <laughs> well, dude, I'm, li- I'm literally fucking... Acrobatics is balancing, yeah, so it'd be acrobatics. Oh, fuck. Let's go fucking boot this dude. Nine. All Plus, together. Nine all together, yeah. Oh. So you go to wow. boot him. However, this guy is agile. He's a six-year seeker. He sees it coming. He moves out of the way, and he goes to elbow you right in the head. What's your AC with the broom? So it's 10 plus your broom stat. It's 10 plus my broom stat? Yeah, so what's your oh, broom stat? Oh, it's 14. Four? So 14 AC. 
18. Oh my god. What a deadly hit. So he gets a oh, plus. I, rolled, like, I haven't even rolled double digits. <laughs> uh, two plus two, so you take four damage. He does an elbow to your head, causing you to get slightly dazed and fall a bit behind. That's barely any damage. But how much health do you have left? I have six health left. Fucking good damage, dude. Uh, That's one third of your health. Uh, not all of it, though. So you get fucking elbowed. You're like, oh, fuck. So, your team, though, is moving up with the quaffle. Brutus is occupied with you. They go in for another goal. Thunderbird goes in for another goal. You threw it to. That's in. Who's the chaser? Roll for the chaser. He's aiming for... Threw it to Julia. Threw it to Julia. That's on the side. You want throw was... it to Julia? I, I threw it to Julia, right? Oh, you threw it to Julia? Okay. Yeah, with last time. I don't know well, if she still had it. Or that not. was on the side here. So, so it's just like, roll again? Okay. 10 plus whatever that guy's stat is. So, as she's about to shoot, Malcolm's like, we need to spread out. Pass it. Pass it over. Remembering your words. Julia, as she's about to throw it, she whips it to the side, passing over Malcolm... To Edson, he grabs it and he rifles it into the three is the second, that's the 20 net. Against the guy's AC, doesn't. The guy quickly flies up, grabs it. It was a good play, but it didn't work. Brutus. After you get dazed, you keep flying forward. The snitch starts to rise up behind the nets of the Thunderbird or of the uh, Wampus. Then it flies through one of the nets into the battlefield that's enraging between the team. So you start to fly up. Brutus, though, comes right up behind you. You know what? I'm gonna turn. I I want to fucking just. Wait, where's he in position to me? He's right behind you. He's right behind me. Okay, I want to do like a little, uh, like pump fake up in the air kind of thing around, and just fucking like hammer the top of his head. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> just pop up on him. Yeah, so you're hanging down. upside down. You're gonna pop him. Let's yeah. do it. <laughs> What is that? Is that strength or? That is going to be another acrobatics. Okay. With your broom. Uh, 15 all together. You pop up. You lay, You hammer him right in the nose. He lifts his hands off his broomstick to cover his eyes and his broomstick starts to wobble. He grabs at it, losing sight of say, you. My thing was a full like turn around. I'm going back for the snitch. That's why I didn't want Beautiful. to turn back. I'm sure, still in sure. it. The guy goes to get it. Grab the snitch. However, a Ronin dives in. Sorry, who's the fucking beater? You control the beater. Roll for a Ronin, please. Uh, it's a nine. Plus his three is 12 against... T oh. A Ronin goes in colliding with the guy. As he's about to grab it, boom, smacking him out of the way. Holy crap. They got the quaffle. They're moving back towards you, though. Same with the Seekers. The whole team's coming towards you. They're aiming for which part... Which net are you covering? I'm going to cover the the more points at the one and two. Okay. One and two. He's aiming for two, so you get that plus one AC, sir. Okay, he's going to go shoot at you for a six. No. Nope. Ball rifles out towards you. However, he's not accurate enough. I don't know, however, you want to stylistically grab this. Do you want to catch it? Oh, it's just it like an off shot. It's off. It's an off like, so he goes to aim at the hoop you're at. Yeah. So you just, you knew he was going to do it, you calculated it, and you moved up and stopped it in time. What do you want to do, though? Do I see the snitch coming towards me or no, as well? Yes. I do? Yes. Is it close, or is it far? You're not allowed to grab it. I know, but, like, what is it, like... Yeah, so if, like, the quaffle just came at you, the snitch is heading between the, the top net and the middle, and the right net. So it's coming between there. So if everyone's coming towards me, I want to look at Julia and say, go, and I want to throw her another lob pass, and just, like, sort of, like, switch the play up and see if she can get, like, a... Oh break shit! Away, you know? Roll. Eighteen. <sighs> you lob one of the beaters go up to try to block it, but they miss. It lobs over. Julia gets it. How she's not the fastest flyer. She's moving down the field, and the beaters are on her. A Ronin looks at you, and he's like, "I either help them or I help you." Help them. <laughs> He flies back and he collides with the other beaters, allowing Julia to push forward, roll forward to score. She's going to shoot at which net? 15. Let's go. Oh, Holy you're good rolls shit. Out, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm any double digits for myself, yo. 
110 points. She scored a 30 point. The guy could not stop in time. She fakes him out. He goes to the bottom. Then she whips Shit. it at the top. Goes through. The team, Thunderbird pass back. The gold snitchel flies through the nets of Thunderbird. Again, Brutus is on you. As he's coming by you, he quickly goes to smash into you. Like, you're kind of in his way. So, Brutus is going to knock into you. So, you need to do a roll. Clothesline. Can I... Mm-hmm. Can I... If he smashes into me, it's a penalty for him, right? Yes. I sort of want to invite the contact. <gasps> So you're not okay. So, oh my! So you're more so you're like tensing up, ready for it, or yeah, like I'm bracing in my. Do another con save. So because you're bracing, I'll give you advantage. I'll give you advantage because you're bracing. Okay. Fifteen. That's on the dot for a con save. Scratch off your last one. You've no con saves left. One more time, you're knocked out. He smashes into you. You go flying into the pole. Your broom falls. You grab onto the post, though, holding oh on for God. dear life. What the... F- Holy shit. The team comes towards you with a quaffle. You're in the bottom left hoop, so it'd be the 20 points. He aims for... Four, which is the bottom left? No, four. Oh, yeah, four is the bottom left. Oh, yeah. shit. <laughs> So you're standing there, he aims, the ball, the wind just shoots it towards you. You kick it out, it stops. The beater looks pissed. He's like, what the fuck? Holy shit, Dave, you're holding on his ball, you kick the ball out. Brutus, he's like, get back here, as he's behind you. You're now ahead of that other guy, getting near the snitch. Get it to 15. Hey, 18 hey, plus 4! Let's go! Finally. You fly go. in. As you're grabbing the snitch, Brutus grabs you by the back of your neck, ripping you off the broom. You fall down towards the ground, smashing into the ground below. Brutus stops flying. He looks down. You lift your hand up, opening with the oh, golden yeah, snitch. Just, just stop that, bro. The Let's whole go. crowd stand up, starts screaming and chanting. Holy fuck. Max, or not Maxine, Aronin comes over this broom waving you to hop on. You hop on. I just want to like, just be absolutely ecstatic, selling with the crowd. Like, Holy shit. Just looking at Arthur with, with the snitch on. Yeah. He's I, on the ground, I, right? Yeah, I'm on the ground. Yeah, like, I can go chase him and shit. Yeah. So, I, oh, yeah, to... you take a D10 damage. You take two. You're not, you're okay. The adrenaline's keeping you alive, too. You guys fly down the whole team groups. You all meet up and just pump. Dude, I, I'm giving the snitch to Patrice. Dude. I just want to hold it up and as the whole like Thunderbird. Is he roars. Where's Maxine? Sorry, Maxine there? She's not there. Uh, is she on the? Uh, field? She's over on the other side of the field, laying unconscious. Okay, running over, running over. And if I see her, then immediately I'm gonna go like, um, yeah, as soon as. I notice. So you guys run over. You notice her shoulder is completely dislocated. She's laying there. And she opens her eyes as you guys get to her. And she's like, I know we won. And she looks and your eyes open. And she sees Patrice. And she's like, good goalkeeping, kid. Good beating out there, yo. Let's go. I'm going to say I wouldn't have got the snitch if you uh, didn't help me there. Holy shit. Oh, Azini roars. Thunderbird wins. Thunderbird wins 260 to 30 points. <laughs> That's a slap. <laughs> Absolute slap. The whole Thunderbird Tower is roaring. Wampus is booing. Brutus flies his one or flies his broom down, getting towards you guys. He hops off. He towers over Arthur and he pokes you really hard on the shoulders. Like, you only won because your brother told me not to hurt you. Don't forget that, you little shit. Uh, don't forget who uh, was the one that actually was able to hit someone. I want to I wanna go be beside Arthur's hole in the snitch yeah. in front and of the face. Oh. Yeah, and then I want to point to that. I'm like, by the way, thanks for the epic uh, landoff after I grabbed the snitch and beat your team. Dude, oh, yeah. Bruce looks mad. I, and then I also want to say, I'm like, you might, uh, uh, my brother might be your role model, but I'm his blood. <laughs> A Ronin steps up. He's like, that's right. Thunderbird is not losing a game, Wampus. And Brutus just like, 
grabs his boot, like, to... snaps it over his leg, throws it, and walks off the field. I just want to start, like, stamping with, like, the broom. Thunderbird. Everyone Thunder starts Bird. chanting with you. Let's go. The thunder roars with you. Thunderbird. Thunderbird. Thunder lightning. This was truly a memorable day. <laughs> Thunderbird <laughs> won with lightning and thunder roaring in the sky. <sighs> Holy shit, Paya. Yes. Oh, Steve, okay, I'm back. Or we're back. <laughs> I'm back. I'm back. Okay. So, Quidditch game. Everyone is losing their marbles cheering. The Thunderbird fans are running onto the field. Do I... Running through the muddy water, the freaking field, just cheering and screaming. I want to pocket the snitch. I want to sort of send to keep it. Like, I don't know if they make you put it somewhere, but I just want to, I want to hold on to it. So, um, <laughs> Maxine starts laughing. She's on the ground. She opens her eyes, sees you do that. She's like, they're going to need it back, Patrice. <laughs> no, we can't. It's Arthur's, first, it's Arthur's first snitch. He needs to keep it. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I want to look. I'll hold on to it for you. I'll see if they find it. So Melvin runs over. I'm unless just going to be like, I'm just going to be like, see who finds, what, who's looking for. What, what do you have? That's the snitch, gonna... man. You should. This is yours. You should keep it. I want to, just like. No, I'm giving uh, it to the MVP. This is the most oh. valuable thing. This is your first snitch of many. You should deserve to keep it. So you, you're the one that catches the snitch. I just stand in front of those rings. <laughs> so Maxine holds her shoulders. Oh, just, just freaking kiss, guys. Seriously. I'm just gonna grab the and just put it down on her while she's laying. I'm like, you're right, and then just walk away. Snitch turns on, so it's like grinding at her neck. Fucking wings just step. <sighs> so you put it on her chest. Um, Melvin runs over and just starts like truffle shuffling, shaking his gut. He's like, <laughs> the paint is completely washed from his body. I, mean, I want see... high fives for like all the, all that. Like Kiana and Victoria and shit, like where I'm hyping them up too when they come down. I'm oh, going nice. looking for my broom because I didn't have it, so I'm just oh, going to yeah. go and get it. Yeah. Yeah. So you walk over it, fallen. Um. So you you go and grab your broomstick. You um. You guys can see Crowgas after you grab your broomstick. He's like Arthur, and when you look up, you see Crowgas. Just like fully painted out, just being like Thunderbird, and he's fly like he's got feathers on. He's flapping these like feathered wings, like he's a mascot. Yeah, I'm just gonna be like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the group comes together, saying <laughs> Thunderbird bitch. Tower, time for celebration. <laughs> and uh, Aronin picks up uh, Maxine and starts to carry her back to Thunderbird Tower for an after celebration. Finn, finally, completely missed the game. So Sheena looks at you. It's been a couple hours. You've done some good reading from this, in this encyclopedia. So Sheena looks at you. Goes, Should, do you do you think they won? She's like, who cares, right? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. There's two two first years on the team. I heard that's not good. So, so well, from what I've heard, Wampus is super good. So they probably won. Yeah, I guess so. So she's like, how, how are you liking your encyclopedia? Do I, do I know what's in it yet? Yeah, so you've been reading through it. It's been a lot of history and magic. Quite boring, but it's went into a lot of depth on the Gaunt family tree, specifically Isolt Sayer. Um, it talked about how with her Pukwudgie, with um, the Pukwudgie she met when she first immigrated here. Jonathan? Jonathan. Um, <laughs> That's nothing me, is it? No. We'll oh, call yeah. him Jonathan for now. I don't think I have any NPCs. I feel like it's not actually a person. Mm -hmm. I feel like there was a name. Wait, there, there was, was a name. I don't remember. Was it name. William? Was it William. It was. I knew it was a regular person name. So it talks about how William showed her these ancient temples and how Isolt Sayer um, somehow saw them, but many people, such as her husband and children, could not see them. And each of these places were temples dedicated to the nature of Ilvermorny. These temples would later on become entrances into a labyrinth she created under the school. However, nobody has ever found them. 
fast forward in the encyclopedia, you start to read about Henry Remore and how he writes about discovering the temples and how he thinks the Chanotila are the answer. Moving on from there. Lao has started to write her own things from her Japanese magical culture. You get to the pages, you've never heard of this type of magic, although you've only been at Elvermorny for a month. It's talking about inscription magic, such as inscribing um, sigils that essentially give it, give a magical artifact its potency or its effect. So she, she talks about her bloodline and how they're linked to blacksmithing special type of magical blacksmithing called inscripting. However, that's all she's really written about. Moreover, um, it talks about the snakewood tree a bit, but nothing you don't already know. Any more? Oh. And Henry or more, he talks about, in some of his pages, this is an important aspect. When you do an investigation role, because again, this is an encyclopedia, it's like a thousand page book. So you're looking for important bits. <coughs> roll higher than a 12. Matt finally gets a roll to die. Or a 19. Nice. And then plus whatever I have, I feel like that's enough. Anyway. Yeah, it's more than enough. So you read through the book, and you get to the page, the important page that you know is very important. The puzzles and traps that Remore used heavily mimicked three cultures. Japanese culture, Scandinavian, and, um... Scandinavian, Japanese... Oh, sorry, and South American. He talks about how in the labyrinth he has riddled it with magical creatures that also guard certain hallways. These magical creatures range from a, a fiery serpent that glides along fire and can teleport within fire. Heavily dangerous, it says run on sight. Another creature he managed to capture in his travels using the help of ember was a thunderbird that he trapped in the labyrinth. He talks about how Henry Ramore mentions that he didn't put the creature down there, but in his travels he discovered that there was a horned serpent that was great friends with a Zolt. That was the final chamber leading into the the, the um into Salazar Slytherin's wand. And how the horned serpent refused to let anybody who didn't contain Isolt's blood to pass by. Top of that, he mentioned some of his favorite traps from uh, Scandinavian culture was mostly magic that froze or overheated the body and necromancy that would bring back the dead. So he talks about how he essentially stole a lot of skeletal remains from Egypt, planted them in the labyrinth, and used Scandinavian magic to bring back their mummified corpses. Mummified corpses are extremely deadly, as some of their um, some of the cloths used to wrap them have been inscribed with Japanese magic. Extremely deadly, run on sight. So you've got mummies, you've got some sort of serpent that can glide through fire, a thunderbird, a horned serpent. Um, he talks about how his best friend willingly said that he would guard the labyrinth. He talks about how his best friend was a vampire that often traveled with him at night, only at night. Because they can't be out in the day. Just clarify. <laughs> Smart ass. I don't know. Um, <laughs> something like, I didn't know what I was getting myself into, but we got vampires, werewolves, mummies. 
all the fucking something stuff. else that you notice in the writing that very it's almost like a footnote that he wrote in afterwards that Henry Moore would have wrote in afterwards. Like so something he just in? like he hand wrote it in, yeah. Okay. It's different from the other writing. So, talks about how he discovered that the Sasquatch dug the labyrinth. Hmm. And how Zolt made a deal that the temples could be used as safe havens for the Sasquatch. Henry Ramore's last note is that I fear that Makusa's war being waged against Sad the Sasquatch will eventually affect Ilvermorny. Mm. Okay. And that's it? Yeah, as you're writing notes down from this, Kubo comes over with some water. And you use your water. Thank you. Could I, uh, like, with this information, is there anything, like, I can deduce from it? Like, would I have to roll to see if I can figure anything out? Yeah, what do you want to deduce from it, though? That's what I'd have to know. Um, like, if this whole, like, Sasquatch thing, handwritten, has anything to do with the Sasquatch in the school, like, if I feel like... If it, maybe when it was let loose, it went down to the labyrinth or something. I don't even know if I'd be able to think that, like, how it would work. Trying to deduce whether or not it would have fled into the labyrinth? Yeah. Or if just, like, if they had anything to do with each other. Just him writing this, plus the Sasquatch being there. You know what I mean? Like, it's just kind of strange. You find something in the school that leads to this labyrinth that was built by Sasquatch, where Sasquatch was held captive. I don't know, there's nothing I can really do with that, never mind. So you're trying to deduce, just to clarify, you're trying to deduce whether or not the Sasquatch when it escaped to use the labyrinth to... Yeah. Like uh, You would know that the only entrance, though, within the school is the snake would true. Yeah, so it means never mind, tongue. never mind. It would have been a good insight if the, par the parcel tongue thing didn't exist, that would have been a good deduction. Yeah. Um. You could deduce. You wouldn't have to do an investigation roll necessarily. You could deduce, though, that it could possibly heading towards the temples if they're safe havens. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Oh, that's okay. What, I like, but I guess I didn't need to roll. Like, more or less, is, is it going to go there? But. So, yeah, you could definitely deduce that. Um, you wouldn't have to roll. You just... Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you want to read a magical preacher's book... And then make further deductions requiring an investigation roll. More so a magical creature. If you want to do a magical creature's roll to see which way the Sasquatch would have went, like which temple it's more likely to go to, you can do that. Oh, I could try that. Yep. I mean, yeah, because if you would have do that, then you would just know that. Okay, that's like... What's your magical creature's at? Um, it's under wisdom, so four, I guess. It's plus four. Oh, shit. Uh, seven total. Uh, Some total. Not 100%. You're not really sure which safe haven it would have moved towards. For all you know, it could be in the Brightwood defending youngsters who walk in there. Yeah, I guess for all I know. It's really just, uh, handing people papers that they don't even fucking read. I'm just kidding. You, uh... Would I have read that, though? Like, I, <laughs> you I, just, why don't you just... I, I guess I, I would have read it. Eventually like, within that month? Sure. Yeah. So yeah, you would have read that there would have been an H in blood. Yeah. There was like an H drawn on it with a finger and then an R. So it was, okay. Um, Sushina so looks at you, she's like, well, I think I've studied enough for one Saturday. I'm going to go get ready for, um, for Wampus, see if we won. Aeon is probably wondering where I am. Okay. She's like, are you going to stay here much longer? Mm, I don't know, maybe a little bit. I'm not sure. So, Sushina so leaves, shutting the door behind her. As she closes the door, the back one opens. Is Kubo still in there with me? 
Kubo is not in there with you. Why? <laughs> Kubo, man, he does fucking shit all the time. <laughs> He's a sneaky little fox. Kubo does what Kubo wants to do. The back door opens, okay. I guess I'm going to go back to it. You go back to it, and again, it's that golden arch with that stone Oh, can I do a look around if anyone else is there? No, well, there's not. No, she you just look around, there's no one else. Um, when you approach the stone slab this time, you notice that your deduction before, how it only showed the fire, um, the wind, and the water. water is still there. There's no earth symbol. Yeah. However, the map you have mm. has the earth symbol. So I can figure out that this is the earth symbol here. Yeah. This Like this door or the school or whatever it is, is the earth symbol. The school is not the earth symbol. It's the, the earth symbol actually on the map is in the bottom right mm -hmm. of the map as opposed to where Ilvermorny is in the middle. Oh, okay. So it's almost, I don't know if, the sh if it's really called the shape. It's kind of like, let's draw it out. Why did I grab your pencil when I have my own? So this, so this door, even though it doesn't show the, uh, um, that like would the be the shape. In, it, okay. That would be the earth. However, that's, that's not on his slab, but when you put the map up, you see that it's almost missing a symbol. Oh, so like I'm only seeing this much. Exactly. And then this completes it, the other map. The map part completes, completes it. it. Okay, so that's not, so the map, like the door isn't necessarily showing that this is where I'm at. Like I'm here. Okay. Kubo, you hear his clicking. And he comes into the room and he looks up at you and looks at the map. And then looks at the arch and he looks at you kind of quizzically and starts to click. What are you trying to say? So he takes the little pause on the map and he holds it up and he's like. So am I figuring this out? Like, am I putting two and two together or do I have to? So you can do an intelligence roll on that. Oh, okay. Unless you want to make a guess, but you can just do like a base intelligence roll to kind of like infer what he's trying to fucking tell you. Trying to tell me. Uh, um, 13 plus intelligence one, 14. 14, okay. Um... You you think he's trying to tell you to add the symbol? Yeah. Um. Afterwards, Kubo looks over. He's like, and you can see he's pointing at like what looks like a chisel and a hammer. A chisel and a hammer. Like to put it in the thing. So he starts clicking and nodding. Starts hopping up and down. Like I'm supposed to draw in this earth symbol. So he starts nodding and jumping up and down. But, like, I don't know if I want to. That's fine. So Kubo is just like... Why? Tell me why. So he just shrugs. Can you... Can you write? So he takes some parchment paper. I'm guessing this is going to be fucking chicken scratch. You don't even have to do it. <laughs> oh, really? Oh. <laughs> what is that? Oh, okay. You're not actually drawing <laughs> something. Uh... I don't know why you want me to do this. Why can't you do it? So oh, never Kubo, mind. I just saw you draw. Grabs it. Kind of like goes like this to tell you to move. Yeah. Okay. Goes up. Looks at the map. Looks at it. Starts to chisel it slowly. Slowly. Draws the symbol in. The whole stone arch glows. And then the stone starts to just vibrate and then turn to ash. But it's, it's suspended in air. So the stone just like dematerializes and Kubo like looks at it, he sniffs it and he pulls his head back. Kind of concerned. But the stone's like levitated. It's no longer a stone slab. It's all like particles. As if the arch superheated it. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Like is it open? Like what's happening? So he looks, walks over and he starts analyzing the arch, the golden arch. Yeah. What do we do? What do we do here, Kubo? Kubo? So Kubo looks at the arch and he's just shrugging. He's like... So but you can see when you look at it, the four symbols are, are along the arch. Yeah. They almost look like slab-like buttons. So I can push one? Yeah. So you push the one. The, the one closest to you is the fire one. When you push it, 
the particles, the stone-like particles, begin to glow red. I'm gonna push the next one. Uh, the water one makes it turn blue. Next. Earth is like a soily brown. Next. Air one's like a very light green. Okay. So Kubo starts to like scratch at his face. He runs over to the encyclopedia and hands it to you. Where a section talks about how only the, he who can see the Chanotila can access these temples. Henry Ramor though puts another footnote where I had built a portal where I could not see the Chanotila. So he built a portal to these. Because he couldn't see them. He couldn't see them. So this is it. This is the one. I'll just reach my hand out and yeah. see see if it goes through. Which one do you want? I guess the last one would be the wind one. You feel like a nice, cool breeze on your hand as you reach through. But your hand disappears through it. It's like it's gone. I'm going to just pull it back out. Yeah, and your hand's totally fine. It's like, I don't want to try the fire one, man. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going <laughs> to mess around with that, but it's like, okay. So I feel like I can deduce that that's where these go is to those symbols. That's where this thing goes. But why was that last symbol not there before? That's what I want to know. Good question. Very good question. Is there a way to take it out? The slab buttons? Yeah. Or the, what he chiseled in. What he chiseled in. No, because it's turned to particles now. It's turned to particles? Yeah, so it's like a particle-like door now. Oh, so this it's not even a slab anymore. It's stuck like that. As far as you know, yeah. Can I try to take it, any of the slabs out? Yeah, so you pull out, you start to pull out one of it like a brick, and you yeah. pull out the, the fiery stone slab, yeah. and it causes the particles to return to back to being a stone slab. With just that piece missing? Piece missing. Is it... It's magical slab. Yeah, like that. You just thicken the plot. It's a magical slab though, right? Yes. Fuck. Fuck. Oh. You have thickened the plot. So now it's just me and Kubo in this room, and we know what the fuck this door does now. And we have this slab that if we put it back in, it's going to start doing that shit all again. Probably. Walking to carrying around a brick for the rest of the game. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I guess we're going to have to carry this brick until we find something to do with it. I have a bag with me, obviously. Yep. But I can't turn this into something else, lighter, no. There's nothing to do about this. Can't use my spell on it. If it's magic. Try. If it's magic, I can't, right? I don't know, I'll use a spell on it. Let's try it, let's try it. Sure. Do roll? I have to roll? Oh, no, you wouldn't, because there's no threat. What do you have yeah. to roll for? Yeah, what do you want to turn it into? It's not magic, it's just more of a piece to complete the puzzle that ignites it. Oh, fuck. Turns into a pen, loses his pen. Fuck. Um, wow. Guys, I could turn it into anything. What am I turning it into? I can't give you it won't be permanent though will it it'll just like isn't it just it's like, until I change it back yeah. oh, it's until you change it back yeah, yeah. so uh I think I'm gonna turn it into uh shit this is tough I don't even know like I can turn it into anything right like as long as it's smaller yeah it's about like this big. It's only the size of a brick. Size of the brick, okay. Um I'm gonna turn it into a book. Cool. Okay. So you do that. So the, add The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, that's the book. Hell yeah. So write that down in your inventory. What's Make sure you take a good note. <laughs> Where's the inventory? Magic key. Where's the inventory? Oh yeah, do you guys really have an inventory? Yeah, we do. It's on uh it's not your spell page, but this page. Where's the, where's the items at? I'd say write it in treasure. Yeah. Does so that count as a treasure? Yeah, it does count as a treasure. But I should write that it's the fire one, right? Yeah. That it is the fire one? Did you take the fire one? Which one did you want to take? 
if the fire one's huge, I'll take the fire one. But sure, yeah. I mean, water is my favorite element. Take the water one, then. You. I'll take the water. Sure. So you take the water one. <laughs> They're yeah, all actually, huge, man. You know what? Here. By you taking one of those, you have now made it even harder for someone to investigate. Because they might be like, oh, I figured it out, but it's like, but where's no. the fucking key? I'm taking the earth one because that wasn't there before. Ah, boy. That's what I was thinking in my head, but I'm like, I can't, I can't say. I'm taking the earth one, and that's fine. Thank God. All in my head, I'm literally be like, no, take the earth one, please. He now book. Carry that book everywhere. Smart man. So Kubo kind of waves you out of the room now. He's like. Okay. Is he coming with me? Yeah, he's coming. He shuts the door behind you, locks it. So he has the key? He doesn't... Well, he does have a key, yeah. So I was like, well, I guess we're just not talking about this. Um, but also, like, how am I supposed to understand you? If you're supposed to teach me spells, how do we... So... <clears throat> Kubo touches your forehead with his two little claws, touches your forehead, and the most majestic deep voice you have ever heard, he's like, I am Kubo. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you just do that before? So he, again, holding his fingers on your temple, he's like, this is very hard to do. It requires a lot of energy. Okay, save your voice, that's fine. Okay, actually... One spell. Teach me one spell that I need right now. <laughs> Quick, while I have you. Good, good question. Okay. Let's How see. do I, Do you have a spell <clears throat> that'll make it easier for me to sneak around? Probably. Hold on. A little stealth action. I need a little bit more stealth. <clears throat> so he says, I do not have a spell, but an old magical artifact so he walks over to Lau's desk and at the bottom there's like a little paper slip on like one of the drawers that reads Kubo's belongings <laughs> and he opens it up and then he's just rummaging through stuff like just viciously he's like <clears throat> and then all of a sudden he pulls out a small <laughs> very weird but a small locket it's kind of like a it's like an iron locket that's kind of folded and interlocked into like a circle. So there's like a claw-like mark, claw-like mark, claw-like mark. They interlock together. Okay. At the center of it is a leaf. Okay. So he uh, he holds it out and he looks at you and he's like, and when he pokes the leaf, he goes invisible. And he pulls his claw away. He, comes visible again so he puts he hands that over to you so then he touches your temple he's like in Japan there's a rare tree a rare herb that when touched creates invisibility my kind used it often to hide from the nomads Japanese folk does he tell me the name of the tree no. Do you want to ask him what it is? Yeah, sure. Okay. I don't want to strain him too much, though. <laughs> I don't want to strain him too you much. The brain power you got yeah. there. Oh, excuse me. So it is the it is known as the Cassius Folumium. Okay. Cool. That's fucking sick. So now I just have this. Yeah. He says to you though. However, the more you hold it the more brittle the leaf becomes till eventually it'll break. 
Like, the more I, like, use it, you mean? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Not, like, I don't, like, just holding it, like, in general doesn't... No, yeah, the more you use it. Okay. I... You can see, just by the way he touched it, it already looks pretty brittle. It doesn't have many uses left in it. You probably could estimate four. Four uses. Okay. Might need, might need to find something else as well. So then his, uh, he pulls his hands from your temple and he's like... That's it for now? He nods. Okay. So well, he walks over to Lau's door and he opens it and he kind of like waves you, uh, very gentlemanly-like. He like waves you out of the room. Okay. I'll see you later then. So he clicks and he shuts the door behind you. As you exit the room, you can hear cheering, roaring down the hallways, echoing, Thunderbird! Thunderbird! I guess they won. So I'm just walking, I guess. I'm walking down the halls until I see this stuff. Yeah, so you climb up the stairs, and you can see the group is making their way up to Thunderbird Tower. The whole Quidditch team has Patrice and Arthur up, holding them up, cheering, just throwing them up in the air. The whole Thunderbird house is behind them, cheering Good for them. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I'm gonna go to the library. Yeah. Fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it's so funny. <clears throat> Sorry. Sorry, I don't want to celebrate right now. Okay. I, we don't know. Actually, I don't think I've noticed you're missing, honestly, right now. No one cares, yeah. It's fine. I'm caught up in the moment. You make your way to the library. As you enter, someone exits. It's Evelyn. And she scans you up and down. She's like, what are you, what are you doing here? Shouldn't you be with your Thunderbird house? I like to read. So she starts laughing. She's like, oh, apparently it doesn't help you a lot in class, though. Nope. So she scans you up and down as if she's looking for something else to say. But just kind of does like a scoff and then walks past you. Yeah, I think I saw Melvin back there with them too, though, if you want. So she stops and she's like, what are you implying, Finn? I'm implying that Patrice going around talking about you and Melvin. She's like, excuse me? What is he saying? I don't the know. true golden snitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Just go. Go ahead. So she stares, like, glares at you angrily, turns around... And then just walks, like, starts marching away angrily. Yeah, I could have handled that better, I think. <laughs> the true golden snitch. That's uh, so funny. It's, it's silver snitch. When you <laughs> snitch on the golden snitch, it's a silver snitch. <laughs> I actually don't even know if I knew that. I was there. No, I was there yes, when you said that. Yeah, we got I, it. yeah, I was there when he said it. Okay, good. I just want to make sure I wasn't... At the library, you, what are you looking for? Um, I have a few things I'm looking for. Okay. Uh, do you want to do me right now, or do you want to go back to them? No, we're oh. good. Okay. I just had a nice um, fucking 45-minute freaking... Uh, yeah. Well, first, first and foremost, I'd like to read up on... Uh, well, okay, after the things I just read... I'd like to read up on Sasquatch a little bit more. Okay. What specifically about Sasquatch? Um, Sasquatch. And, okay, so if it's a common known fact that they dug the... The labyrinth? Actually, no. Yeah. So just about them and the labyrinth, I guess, in general, if there's anything on that. Just like, is there a section to Sasquatch, or is there just... Yeah, there's a magical creature section. Funny enough, when you're over there, you see Briar... Again, shorter girl. She's got roses all around her hair, different flowers put in her outfit. But she looks over at you. She's like, well, Finn, are you looking for magic creature books? Yeah, I was looking on uh, the Sasquatch. She's like, oh, you don't need a book. I know everything about them. What do you want to know? Um, uh, I heard they, they dug uh, the labyrinth. Uh, yeah. 
I don't know. She knows. She's like, yeah, the labyrinth under the school. Yeah. Yeah. They made, uh, his old Sayer and William made an alliance with them. If that, they helped her dig the labyrinth, she would give them refuge at the school. So, is that, is that deal still in effect? Do you know? She's like, well, I'm not sure. The treaties haven't been updated. Um, I would assume so. As far as I know, though, the Sasquatch only ever really bowed to one person, and that was Isolt Sayers' family. Same with the Pukwudgie. Pukwudgie and the Sasquatch worked very close together with Isolt and her family. So the Sasquatch and the Pukwudgie are also uh, work together. Yes, they're very, um, yes. Huh. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. From what I remember from some of the books, it was said that the Pukwudgie would guard the grounds of the school, but the Sasquatch would guard the outskirts of the school. So, like, the Brightwood. Yeah. Hmm. That's interesting. Do you have any other fun facts? About Sasquatch? Yeah, some things people don't normally know. If you know everything, let's test your knowledge. What's the craziest thing you can come up with? Very intelligent. Very, very intelligent. Um, she comes towards you. She's like, between you and me, if they wanted to, if they wanted to destroy Makusa, they could easily do it. They are master hunters. They're great at infiltrating other habitats and killing creatures much stronger than them. Their magic is all around stealth. Uh. So for instance, a thing most people don't know, and it's actually uh, very secretive, um, Sasquatch can actually shapeshift. Uh, what do you mean? So Sasquatch can mimic their environment, other creatures they spend time with, though it requires a good amount of time, shapeshift. Meaning, a Sasquatch can turn into a human and sit in their habitat for a long time, essentially pretending to be one. So anyone in here could be a Sasquatch? Possibly. Uh, I'm sorry, you, this is a lot right now, you know? I guess that is a pretty crazy fact, didn't know that. <laughs> it's very crazy, not a lot of people know that. Um, so I think that was like a 10. Maybe before it was like a one. Do you have anywhere in like the five range, prior? Do you have anywhere like, you um, know? They're extremely strong. They can lift things most like like five times their body weight. And they're usually about, you know, around 300 pounds. Okay. This, okay. Yeah, that's, wow. Thank you. This has been a good help. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know if I can want to know any more right now. But if uh, I do need to know anything, I'll, I know where to go. So, that's that's great. So she's like, well, it's really nice talking, Finn. If you're more interested in magical creatures, come see me. And I'm excited to see you in Transfigurations. Will do. Actually, do you know anything? Just using it for knowledge. Briar starts crushing on him, too. I'll I I'll I'm in the Thunderbird house. Do you know anything about a Thunder? Like, what are they like? The real ones. Thunderbirds, very majestic creatures, very large, and they usually operate solo for a long time. However, anytime there's a massive lightning or thunderstorm, you can bet there's a thunderbird, a thunderbird nearby. So you mean like today? So possibly today, yeah. There could have been one. Well. There were a lot of thunderbirds on the pitch there. <laughs> Dangerous creatures, though. They can literally summon lightning from their wings. It said every beat of their wing is a thunder. It's thunder cracking. What do you know about the horned serpent? 
So she kind of nods her. She's like, well, I just know the folk tales from some indigenous tribes, but not, not a whole lot. I know that horned serpents usually operate in rivers. They're very um, protective creatures. They usually form bonds with other creatures within their territory. I know that their horns can be made into wands. That's all. That's about it. Their horns made into wands. Okay. Funny enough, actually, I think it's um, his old Sayer's sons. Their wands were made from horned serpents. Um horned serpent horns and it actually when they fought Morgolith their wands connected because Salazar Slytherin's wand when Morgolith was using it it's made from a basilisk fang because they're both snake like entities mm. the basilisk fang collided with the horned serpent core causing them to connect that's interesting very interesting Rumor says that the only wand that could possibly defeat Salazar Slytherins would be that of a horned serpents. Do you know where they are? Sorry? Do you know if any exist right now? None have been sighted since the Zolt Sayer. Said that they should be dead, actually. Extinct. Same with Basilisk. That's crazy, too. Um... You know what, this is, this is a lot of good information. I'm going to talk to you again later, but uh, I had to do some other reading. So, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go read some more. Cool. So, you walk away. I don't want to be rude to her, I'm just saying. Like, no, I'm that's fine. Like, like, she's, she's starting another crush because she doesn't, hasn't met someone who likes magical creatures that much. Yeah, well, she just rocked my fucking world. Jesus <laughs> Christ, okay? <laughs> like, you don't need to give me all this information right now. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, they could be any one of us. Like, huh? <laughs> Are you one? <laughs> <laughs> hey, they could just infiltrate their hunters. They could kill anybody. It's like, oh, okay. Fuck. Um... Arthur's dad's just a fucking Sasquatch. It's all making sense now. No, sorry. Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, there was another thing I really badly wanted to read about, and that was uh, a Zini's failed experiment. That's been this fucking guy's going for all that good it's exposition. Been, no, it's been on the back burner for like a while now. I need to just do this. And, like, I'll dip. We can come back to the library. No, no. Anytime. You want to read it? Let's do it. Yeah, let's go. Okay. You look for the book, however, it's in a forbidden section of the library in which is behind the desk of Acorn. A Aaron. Am I not just allowed to ask him for it? Sure. Hey, can can I read that book? So Aaron looks back and he's like, these are forbidden. You need special permission from Azini to read these. Is there a reason why they're forbidden? Well, they contain very mature content that requires intellectual ability. I don't think you would be able to comprehend anything from this. But, like, even the book on, like, on her failed experiment, really? That's very in-depth transmutation magic. Why, why, why so interested? Because I started reading about it before, and I just want to know what went wrong. So he's like, I don't know if someone at your age should be reading something like that. From what I remember, there are a few horrific entries within it. I've seen worse. So he's like, have you? Because with, and you can see he starts to run his mouth accidentally. He's like, have you? Because within those entries, she talks about how she experimented on Sasquatch. Yep. Oh, well, have you? And she kind of tries to one-up you after that. He's like, well... She also ex talks about how she experiments on Pukwudgie, mimicking their magical capabilities. Did you know Sasquatch can mimic people? She tried to transmutate that gene and put it into other wizards. Yeah, I knew that. So I he shakes his head. That. What? So he's like, what? He's like, oh, Briar, yeah, I was talking to her earlier about it. So he looks at you, he's like, well, I bet you, you haven't encountered something more messed up than this. She tries to trans. She tried once to transmutate multiple people's bloodline into herself. And then he leans forward. He's like, "Why do you think she has that hunch?" Well, 
Well, I always just guessed it was a birth defect, but I guess not. She's like, he's like, I don't think it is, but kind of interesting that she didn't have it after Big Fair failed experiment, but 20 years later she did. Very strange indeed. So you think it just developed over time? Could have been from all the experimentation. Nobody was willing, so she had to do it on herself. Not even Billy. Who? Billy. Billy Staghart, Silas Silverthorn, Billy Staghart, and Azini all worked together with transmutation. However, Billy and Silas refused to experiment on humans. But she did. She did. So what is this big failed experiment, then? The big one. So... He stops, he nods his head, he's like, well, from what I remember reading, Makusa had hired her to essentially take the skeletal remains of Morgolith and see if that, if she could genetically retract the parcel tongue gene. And she had failed. This guy's a <laughs> <laughs> so who's this Morgolith? I've never heard of that. So he's like, yeah, he, Morgolith is the witch that came from the UK. Is old Sayer's aunt killed her parents? Are you sure you've encountered some messed up stuff? Definitely. You're going to have nightmares for weeks if I keep talking. Keep talking. So he stops. He's like, uh, you should probably go read something pleasant now, student. This is pleasant. <laughs> you have persuasion roll? Why? What if I'm actually enjoying it? Yeah, yeah, you persuade him. Uh, oh, no, no, no. Ten total. So he's like, I can see you're genuinely enjoying this. However, I think I've spoken way too much. Also, you should probably seek a nurse about your past if it's more messed up than the transmutation. Why well, stop now? Come on. So he's like, listen, what I'm what I'm telling you isn't something you need to know. You're very young. Enjoy your youth. Maybe I want to know more about the person that's like overlooking everyone in this school. She's like, Azini's changed. She's a much better person now. I think when you're young, you often try to make a name for yourself. And for her, when it backfired, she realized her mistakes and moved on. Hmm. Hmm. She's like, it can't be said for everybody, though. No offense, but your father was the opposite. Made a name for himself in a bad way. Maybe she's trying to do it in a good way. Can I do an insight roll if he believes that she's actually changed? So it's actually a roll. It's not even passive insight, huh? This lying piece of shit. 20. Are you serious? It's a roll to 20 plus my 8 if you want. Dog. <laughs> Fuck your rolls, man. Aaron, he speaks confidently, but you can tell he did not mean it. There is something up about a Zini that makes him uneasy. Okay, well, I'm going to keep going. I know that my father wasn't a good person. I get that. I didn't even know who he was until that long ago. So, that doesn't matter. But I know that you don't believe Azine has changed. I know it. You know it, I know it. I know she hasn't changed. I've seen it. I've seen it up close. A- Aaron, he looks around and thinks, he's like, shh. He's like, between you and me, kid, I don't think she's changed. I think she's a completely different person. And he leans back and he looks around and he's like, now anyways, go on, go away. I've got work to do. Do I have to, like, roll into what that means? To deduce it? Yeah. What's your goal, though? What are you trying to deduce from it? Because you can't say I'm trying to deduce the overall mystery of it. No, I'm trying to deduce if he means, like, a literal different person. Actually, no, I would just, like, he means... Yeah, you can do an investigation roll on that. On, like, if he means a literal different yeah. person. Yeah. Oh, fuck it, man. Uh, 18 plus a 1. Yeah. In that moment, wait, 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 sorry. Which one? Investigation? Is it? Oh, no, it is intelligence. And, yeah, so it is 19 total. In that moment, you stop. You hear the words echo in your head. She's a completely different person. I don't think she's changed. She's different. Different. 
all of a sudden, you flash back to multiple moments. One where you're reading those newspaper articles about her. About her transmutation, how it went wrong, how she disappeared for 20 years. You recall back to the moment your father passed away, and how it was on the same date as her. You recall many mannerisms of Azini, her standing over you and looking at you. Though at the moment, you weren't insightful enough to realize it, but your father used to stand over you like that too. And the session ends there. Did I even know him? Yeah, you know him.